Louise ready to take notes? Okay. Always. Always. Okay, I like hearing that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to call this meeting to order. The Conway Select Board. February 22nd, 6 o'clock. And as usual, our meetings are viewable on FCAT, on the FCAT video on demand channel, it's FCAT Media on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, search for FCAT Media, you will see all of our select board meetings, along with Deerfield meetings and Sunderland meetings and Waitley meetings and Board of Health meetings and, and grammar school meetings and frontier basketball games and on and on and on. So enjoy. So um, the minutes of our last meeting, did everybody get a look at the minutes of the last meeting? Mm -hmm. They look okay? They look good to me. Me too. So I'm gonna make a motion that we approve the minutes of the February 16th meeting only six days ago because we had it on a Tuesday. Right, I'll second. Okay, good. Well, I, I, every, everybody's nodding their heads, so <laughs> thank you. Um, meetings attended by select board members. So we usually go, um, I'll say youngest to oldest first. So anyway, okay. so. Um, well, I, I was at the um, the public hearing on the um, the planning board's meeting on Thursday, but you were both at that as well. And I feel like you both have far more history and knowledge of the project than I do. So, um, but that was, that, that was the one meeting that I attended this week. Thank for me. You're up, Phil. Yeah. That, so that was the same. That was the same for me. That was a uh, the large solar overlay bylaw uh, informational meeting, and um, most of the people on that were people that were affected by the current large solar installation. Uh, and so it was. It was interesting to hear their feedback, and um, always interesting to see the planning board at work. We have a really highly functional planning board you really yeah, do I just want to second that i was really impressed with it was the first yeah. like planning board meeting that i've attended since i've been on select board and i really appreciate the planning board and, and to see their camaraderie and to see them all get along is just really gratifying too so that's a good that's good that's it for you phil yep wow what it's been a vacation week for you i know i know now the budget Budget school budgets are uh, at hand, so we didn't have budget meetings last week. It's nice. Uh, well, I was at the meeting too, although I did get there a little late. But it, yeah, it's always a great meeting, uh, and it's you know the meeting where now we're ready for town meeting. I hope and we're going to have to pass that at town meeting, and all those issues will come up. Uh, although at town meeting we won't have Mary's virtual cookies. All, all she could hand out was virtual cookies so uh, we'll have real cookies at town meeting i imagine the sad thing i mean yeah anyway it, i mean mary's leaving the planning board and and joe is slowly stepping back and it really is a change to our planning board but they're, they're awesome and beth is doing a great job uh, i just find it unfortunate that at hearings like that all of the people who are opposed to something show up and almost nobody who's in favor of something shows up and it and it makes it you, you know it, it makes it hard to think that you're you're getting the the view of the town at a hearing and i wish more people who support things would come but that's that's the way it always works uh public comments so i think we have no no just public here. We have guests today, a lot of guests today, but any public comments? Uh, so, so, it's, so here at, at 610, where, where'd Pat go? Um, Bob, maybe we can get Jackie in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, why don't we do that? Uh, so one of the new business items we have to do that we can get done real quick is is uh, appointing Jackie Choate. I don't know if everybody knows Jackie Choate, my neighbor here in Northern Conway. You've probably seen her jogging uh, with her dog uh, everywhere in Conway. 
And uh, so Jackie Chode has volunteered and been recruited to serve on the Board of Health for a three-year term, <coughs> or actually to serve until the next town election. And then she is volunteering to, if it's still good, she'll run again and to serve a three-year term. So anybody you want to speak ill of Jackie? Uh, I can't imagine it. Or speak, <laughs> or say does nice anybody want to speak I, ill yeah, of Jackie? That's I, I your question. I can't imagine. No, you well, know, I mean, we're we're here to appoint her, and she's been highly recommended by the board. She's going to be taking over for Marie Eichen's slot. Marie has stepped down, and. Uh, I believe it's germane to note that uh, she is a nurse. Thank you. Still at Franklin? I worked in the OR for almost 40 years. And now I'm very active in the uh, area clinics and working at the community health center and their uh, COVID vaccine clinic as well. And my real focus or my focus is trying to get the homebound people of Conway vaccinated. It's been a trial to say the least to get any names whatsoever of true homebound people. That's why my name was on the postcard that went out um, for over 75 to get vaccinated and also asking for any homebound people to call me. So if you know of anyone, if you don't, uh, are not comfortable saying a, a name out loud, um, touch with me or with the Board of Health with the name. So, so Jackie was the nurse at Franklin when I went in to get my first colonoscopy. So you can imagine how fabulous that was. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> that, was just, that was just not enough information, Bob. <laughs> no, that was plenty. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I'm going to make a motion that we uh, that we appoint uh, Jackie Choate to the Board of Health uh, through through the uh, until the next town election. So it's just filling in that term, and then she will run again. She will run for election for the following term. I will second it with with the usual notation that this is an excellent recruit and well done. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. So now, Jackie, you know what you got to go do? You got to go to see Lori at, and you got to stand in front of her and get sworn in and raise no, your right hand. And she'll tell you personal. she'll tell you what to say. And, and then you'll have to just take for, a. Go ahead. Just for these few days before the town caucus. No, and it has, no, the caucus has nothing to do with it. You're on the board of health until the town election, which is after three days after town meeting. Okay. But hopefully you'll go oh. to the caucus and you will say, I would like to run for the board of health in the next election, which is three days after town meeting. That gets you on the ballot. Got it. Okay. So, so, so I made a motion. I didn't hear a second yet. Oh, I think Phil and oh, I. Phil, Phil seconded it, yeah. and I think we all nodded aye. So let's consider aye. that a unanimous vote. Thank you very much, Jackie. And okay, I'm going to leave you and go to the Board of Health meeting. Oh, oh, good idea. I'm glad we did you first. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now, Pat, now we'll uh, now we we want to talk about the Council on Aging and and all of this came up just for people at home who were watching because the selectmen got a letter uh, wondering whether it was possible for people in Conway to uh, attend events at the Shelburne Falls Senior Center. And, and we had a brief discussion of it, not really knowing all that much about it, and said we really ought to have Pat come in and talk to us. Mm -hmm. Um, if I can just interject one thing, uh, Gail Connolly came into the Gail Connolly came into the town office, and uh, uh, she apparently did not get the Zoom link. I resent that to her, so she may be joining us soon. 
Um, I can send her a text actually. Yeah, I'm surprised because I sent it to her as What's well. That? And I got an email from her earlier saying she would be here, so I assumed she meant on Zoom. She walked into town office and wasn't sure where the meeting was. <laughs> so, Pat, perhaps you want to talk about the Council on Aging. You know, we would love to hear uh, the, about this, this proposal that somebody has. Could we attend those meetings? And... And this isn't why Trevor is here, I think, but, but you know, some of the other towns in Franklin County have approached us because we don't have a senior, uh, like an official senior center and said, would we like to join into their senior center? And we said, we'll talk, we'll, we'll <laughs> talk with you that. first. Yeah. So. That's where so, we are. You know, the main problem with joining a consortium is that uh, our federal or a state grant would go to that consortium instead of coming to the town, which yeah. would mean the cancellation of all programs that we currently run. And instead of residents being able to come to town hall for the foot clinics, for the grab and go meals, for the congregate meals when um, when we were able to do those again, um, yoga classes, healthy bones and balance classes. Um, people would have to go to Shelburne Falls or South County Senior Center if you joined a consortium. It would remove, remove our funding. Oh, I just, oh there's I, Gail. Sorry about this. <laughs> Pat, I think. I think just how it works in Deerfield is that um, what's going each on? town gets their funding still through the the, the uh, formula grant still cool. goes to Sundle and, and Waitley and Deerfield and then um, they choose to right they choose to you know put it all in the pot together and then fund you know additionally they fund each town funds some stuff so I think just from Deerfield's perspective is that we're looking to build a new senior center and we're looking for we're, we're, all three towns are looking to um, help, help from the uh, FERCOG for the DTLA funding to try to do a you know a, a feasibility study. What do we need? What are we going to need 50 years from now? What should we build? How would we work together? Um, we thought regionally we could do better. And the only and, and the main thing that we always feel like is because Conway is so such a part of our our community with our schools and stuff is that we just didn't want to leave. Conway out and you're more than welcome to join or some are welcome to come or however you guys want to do it. We just wanted to make sure that we didn't kind of go ahead and start looking at something and, and exclude Conway. We always want to be welcoming. So, you know, and, and maybe Conway isn't in the space, you know, to want to do any of that. And, and I understand like people on the other end, it's easier to go to Shelburne or, or still do your own things in, in the town hall as well. So uh, we just want to offer that just let you all know what we're doing and you're always welcome to join us at any time for any function or if you're interested in, in getting involved to build the center we know it's a travel you know it's a drive down certainly the hill for for us and we don't even know where what we're doing yet so but we, while we were studying this and looking for grant money we just wanted to say hey conway are you interested no no pressure no no anything but just let you know what we're doing and if you want to join us you're welcome to so that's all yeah, the other point I had made was that uh, Conway residents are welcome at any senior center. Yes. Uh, you don't have to belong to a consortium for our residents to take yoga classes, go for meals. Right. Participate. At what point would a center start to feel like there were too many Conway residents, you, you know, that we really ought to make it more official? Uh, you, you, I mean, I... You, I don't, just I don't know at you know at what point we would be less welcome <laughs> as a free rider. You, you, uh, I, you mean like at the at the South County Center? If you were to come, um, really, we have people that come from all over too. As Pat says, that people just kind of go anywhere, whatever class is going on or something. But I mean, I think 
I think if you had, you know, majority wanting to come, you know, if we built a new senior center, of course, you know, that would certainly draw more people in. And I think at, at that point, we, you know, if, if a lot of people were coming, we'd say, well, you know, can you join us? You know, cause we, it's hard to fund this stuff. It's, it's, it's expensive and towns never spend what they should on the seniors. They just never do. It's education, it's everything else, police, and then it's seniors get the last uh, bit of it, which is, which is just not right. So, um, but, so we just never really have enough money to do anything. So anytime mm -hmm. you can pull money together, it benefits everybody, but um, so we're always welcoming for sure. Pat, Trevor, you, go ahead. Tra tra Trevor, did you even know that this was on the agenda or, or no. you, you were here, you're here for the <laughs> FERCOG budget. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so just, Pat, Pat, I didn't set this up with a heavy Deerfield hitter oh, no. to apply, <laughs> to apply the hard it. squeeze or anything. It, <laughs> this is just, he's here for the budget hearing that starts in 20 yeah. minutes. So, uh, so that's all. Just, just so you know, just so you know. Yep. Pat, how do people find out about, you know, Council of Aging events? I, I, I know you have a big bulletin board in the town hall, but almost nobody goes there right now. Well, we're doing things on Zoom. Um, the yoga and two healthy bones and balance classes are held on Zoom. Uh, we have the grab and go meals at Town Hall. Carolyn Bayer um, is running that program. Carolyn wants to say anything about it. Uh, yeah, we do the grab and go meals on, um, we've been doing them on every Thursday. And we have about 20, 22 that participate on a regular basis. Um, we call those people and we're going to start calling, you know, some additional seniors to see if we can build our, on our base. Are all these events in our calendar on the, you know, on our They're in the Conway website? Connection, on the Conway Connection. They are. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, we have, we have a, a regular article in Conway Currents listing all of our activities and programs. Other programs we offer, such as the um, Durable Medical Equipment Loan Program. And I serve as a resource for anyone who wants to call. Um, I, can, I can serve uh, to put people in touch with various organizations. I can help them apply for SNAP benefits and fuel assistance. <laughs> And we contact through for um, the foot clinic. We make contact with people who have come before and are, are interested in coming to the foot clinic. And that keeps bringing in new people. Those are too. very popular, mm. very popular. Lynn, have you been in touch with Lynn Hanley who was the person that wrote us that original note? Is she, you know, happy now? I'm sorry, what? Uh, Pandemic, uh, Bob. Nobody's happy. Patty wants to know if you uh, had reached out to the person who initially wrote the letter. Oh, Lynn Hanley. Yes, I did. Um, she said that her reason for writing it was to have a place where Conway seniors could congregate uh, and discuss issues and uh, help each other out, which is a little unrealistic during a pandemic. But uh, what I would hope is that uh, when the uh, town hall renovation gets underway at some point, and I am a member of the uh, renovation committee, um, that it would a general space would be worked into it for dedicated use by the Council on Aging so that we could have a permanent presence there for people to come in. We used to have them come in and play cards on a Saturday afternoon. Um, we did a soup and sandwich, I'm talking like 20 years ago, uh, soup and sandwich Saturdays with the games and card playing off the wood. Uh, and we do have, you know, our congregate meals bring in um, you know, 20 or more people uh, twice a month. But Carol would have the more figures on that. Yeah, that's, that's the one that, that we do about 20, 22 every single Thursday. 
that we're passing out on Thursdays. And we had when more. The hall was open. We we had in person congregate meals. When we had the when we used the town hall on Thursdays, and we had one a month. Um, well, we, we were have, doing we have more the than main that. meal, and we have brunches also. So there was yeah, and we month. did brunches through Life Path, and and we did one a month of those, and and the congregate meal when when the town hall was open and available to us, and we for the congregate meal that we did with Life Path. We had between 25 and 30. How sometime. do you prepare meals during the pandemic? We don't. That life, uh, path, uh, uh, life path provides the grab and goes. Uh, uh, I see. And they're prepared meals that are delivered in a couple of boxes to the town hall. And then Patsy Cocott and myself bag them up and pass them out. Uh, we did have during the warmer weather ice cream socials and a couple of picnic lunches at uh, Memorial Park opposite town hall. Uh, so, using masks wearing and social distancing. So uh, it, it, it sounds we, like we had a uh, we had a Christmas um, meal at the Waitley Inn for <laughs> 25 people this year. We normally do a meal at the Waitley Inn both um november and december but this year we held it only the one in december and there's usually an annual picnic at the sportsman's club which of course wasn't held this year and that gets quite a few people at the waitley in a year ago when we had the two dinners we had over 30 people for the december one so so we do a lot to get the seniors involved with each other as much as we can without having a permanent senior center. So that's what I I wanted to ask. I mean, it, it, it sounds like we have a very like strong, robust Council on Aging. You guys are doing lots of things for local seniors that we've gotten these requests to sort of officially participate in neighboring senior centers. And you don't feel like that's something that we necessarily need to do as a town because we're already getting the benefits. I mean, any senior can go to Deerfield or can go to Shelburne Falls or, um, so I guess I, what I'm hearing you say is that um, what seems obvious is like, yes, we have a very robust active council on aging and there's not any great benefit to us officially joining another you know, regional senior center. And that right. in fact, there may actually be some kind of, you know, that, that may be a loss to us if we, that may detract from what we're actually doing in the town of Conway for seniors. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Eric. That's absolutely right. That's okay. Thank you. That's what I was. <laughs> <laughs> I myself go to the Greenfield Senior Center and did when it was open. I played Mahjong there twice a week. Uh, mm -hmm. I ran a duplicate bridge game for many years at the Greenfield mm -hmm. Senior Center. And I'll tell you, most of the players came from anywhere but Greenfield. <laughs> that, was, that was a big game. We sometimes held single tables. I think um, if we had that, 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 that's making the point that, that, you know, and I took yoga classes and Tai Chi classes at uh, the Greenfield Senior Center. So. Uh, Bob, before they go, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, for the Council on Aging, um, the Community Preservation Committee uh, needs a representative from housing, and we don't have a housing committee. And uh, Pat, I know you were uh, the rep for a while to the Community Preservation Committee, and I just, while you've got a couple of other members there, I just want to throw that out on the table that that's still vacant and the I CPA has uh, Carolyn expressed an interest I oh think, in... <laughs> <laughs> well yes, yes I did but I wondered how much of a time it, commitment it isn't it it isn't it's you know maybe they meet four times a year maybe you know there's some, some, some optional and there's maybe some transitional members but it's not a real big, you know, commitment. Yeah, well, I, I would be willing, you know, as long as like you say, it's not a, not that I'm not willing, but I, I've gotten involved in the Council on Aging and I, you know, want to stay there, so. 
uh, well, there you go, Pat. You could, I don't need to nominate her. And then you, you, yeah, you Carolyn does call to a meeting this spring. Match made in heaven here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try well, to I keep it simple. Louise will take would, care of the details. I was happy to hear we can go to other senior centers because I didn't even know that until like probably Pat told me. But I'm actually going to the Greenfield one to get my uh, first vaccine on Thursday. So yeah. Um, Lucky you. Lucky you. We couldn't get well. In. Well, I I didn't do it myself. Let me tell you, I had to have a 20 year old do it <laughs> because you know they have faster fingers, and uh, I was having a really hard time. And she did it like it was nothing. <laughs> That's good to know. Maybe you could yeah, help yeah. out with all your kids, uh, Erica. <laughs> I know. Someone should be able to. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to get them to get you one. So anyway. Sorry I was late, but I drove to the town hall because I forgot it was <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> and the roads are pretty slick right now. Oh, gee. Good thing we're all by Zoom. Okay, so yeah. does that cover it for the senior center? Any any last comments, uh, Pat? I really appreciate you talking about the fact that you would lose funding. I, I yeah, thank you for I that. Not, I had not realized that piece. That's really critical. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I think I put it in my email of the twenty first uh, that uh, some years back, uh, <laughs> more than ten years ago, I had. Uh, the conversation with the then director of the Shelburne Falls Senior Center, who said that the cost to join at that time uh, would be about $20,000 to the town. So that's something the town would have to take into consideration too. Uh, when I had a meeting with the uh, board of the South County Senior Center, all they said that they wanted was our grant money, our state grant money to join. That's all. So there's a big difference <laughs> between the, the, and I don't know what you would, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the uh, situation is currently. Because at the time I knew the town meeting was never going to pay $20,000 mm. for the seniors to join. That's a lot. Yeah. And not I enough, did but... not like the idea of uh, giving up our grant money to South County so, and not being able to run programs in town. Yeah, and I, I kind of agree with that. I mean, I, I sit on the board of oversight for the South County Senior Center, and I, I, um, I, I can understand your apprehension to do that. I think that the only thing we wanted to state, again, that was we were starting this regional planning for a, a new senior center and, and looking at what we could do. And we just didn't want to leave Conway out if you were in a position where you wanted to get together and you felt like it was worth the, the benefit of moving your grant money to there would would benefit your residents and you'd have a lot more use to it um then you're more than welcome but there's no you know we're not you know it's up, it's really up to you we just want to make that offer that while we're while we're looking at this you're more than welcome to look at it with us and decide no it's not for us or you know whatever whatever you can learn from it is great we just want to be good neighbors is all thank you thank you thank you okay so thank you very much, Pat and everyone. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it's now 6.30, just about what perfect timing. And uh, where we have a joint meeting with the finance committee. And we also, uh, today, we, I also invited uh, Trish Vanchese, who's here uh, to, to include a joint meeting with the, uh, the capital committee too. So. And, and Roy and I are already here. So uh, the first item, um, Tom, do you want to talk about, uh, you have general considerations of the budget? Uh, I should have a draft uh, Excel sheet for you next week. Uh, there are no real surprises. Everybody heard uh, the school budget so far. Uh, we have some not to exceed numbers, so we're okay to go ahead. I still have to get some revenue information and some final figures from Lee, but uh, I should have the uh, draft Excel sheet for you next week. And was there someone here from FERCOG to go over the FERCOG budget? 
Yes. Uh, I, I'm here. Um, I'm Hi, chair, chairing the board oh, uh, oh, this year, and and also uh, Claire um, Claire Higgins is here, and she uh, Claire's here, and she was um, she is our um, kind of budget director, and uh, and Linda Linda is signing in. Linda Dunleavy's here. So, oh, great. Um, yeah. Think, and Jay DePucchio. Claire and Hi. oh yes, and Jay's here too. Hi, Jay. <laughs> How are you? Hi there. Very uh, well. So Thank you. I think Claire and um, Linda have a presentation if, if you're interested. And well, yeah. One. Hello, Linda. Hello. So do you want to do you want to share a screen? I would love to. So that that's we'll have to have Tom do that for you. He's our screen sharing giant. I have the ability if you want me to bring it up, Linda. Or to you. I have it if, it, if oh, it's do. ready. Yep. Got it? Yep. Thank you. Um, are we getting started? I'm sorry, I was a little You're late. on. Yep. yep. You're, no, okay. you're, you're perfect. Bob, uh, wait. Uh, Alan oh. Singer's not here. He's our chairman. I don't know where Alan is. For what it's we have worth, three committee members of the committee, Roy and yeah, yeah, for what it's worth, I had trouble getting into the uh, meeting. I had to try. I don't know if there were different versions of the uh, Zoom link or whatever, but uh, it took me about three or four times to to get hmm. there. Yeah, so, I think the the one on the calendar on your on your town page is for last week versus this week. I think that was the only thing I found. Yeah, for an issue there. So okay, and that may well be. Yep. Do you want to wait a bit? Mm, you, Bob. I would say no. Uh, uh, I, 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 I mean, I'll I'll, I'll text him, you know, um, and I'll tell him uh, not to use the link on the uh, on the web page. That'd be great. Or find it in the email. So, yeah. So I'll get started then, and we sent this in advance, so if everyone has reviewed it, we could either just go immediately to discussion, or I can um, go through some of the slides, but perhaps not all, because it's pretty long. Should I go do that, Bob? Yeah, I, I think if you could go through them quickly, that would be great. The slides are hard to read just, you know, all by themselves. I know. And, and know what they're about. Okay. So uh, this is gives you an, a quick snapshot of what the COG does. I'm going to skip through that one. I'm going to assume that you are all involved and aware of the work that we are doing in Conway in 2020. Um, so Conway paid in FY21 $16,717. And um, I went too fast. But that leverages uh, a, a 3.5, 3.5 million. Thank you. And that and what when the when the Charter Commission created the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, their vision was that the member towns would pay a relatively small membership assessment, and that that would be used to leverage additional resources and projects and services for the county. And so in FY20, the membership assessment across all 26 towns of Franklin County was $535,680. And our total budget for FY20 was 8,358,444. So a 15 fold cost benefit multiplier. The way that we do that is that we um, bring in a bunch of different revenues. And Claire, do you want to do this table? The, um, the assessments that you're familiar with and that appear in your budget are the bottom section of this uh, segmented graph. And you could see that that section is really quite stable. And what we're able to do. Um, in fact, we decreased it, our proposal for FY22 decreased it by 5.5%. 5 .5%. 
Um, the bulk of our revenues are the top section of these bars, and that's indirect revenue connected from collected from all our grant programs. And that's the section that grows and has grown historically. Um, and it, it's really with that funding that we collect from grants and indirectly fund our general fund that allows us to uh, have an administration and run municipal programs, as well as to be the RPA and uh, apply for and then execute all the grant contracts that we do. So that section, the, the majority of all of our revenues has no impact on our member towns or their municipal budgets. So Claire, where, where in this chart does, you know, the Board of Health and, and the, the inspection program and, and uh, um, the emergency planning, are they, are their budgets for them included here? They are not. This is just um, the general fund. But if we go to the next slide, then I'll be able to tell you that. So here you can see the whole, all, all of FERCOG, the whole 8.5 million. Um, the solid gray section of the pie, which is 47% in FY20, those are grants and contracts. The municipal programs that you've just asked about, inspections, health, um, collective purchasing, there are more, accounting, but I'm blanking, accounting, public health. Um, the emergency communications program, those are all in the, ray, uh, the gray hashed section of the pie, which is 23% of what COG did in FY20. The other 30% is the general fund and the exploded little bar tells you what's in that 30% that is the general fund. 7% is that assessments of that is the assessments to the town and 22% is our indirect from grants. There's another 1% in other type revenues, which is like earning on our bank accounts um, and some professional service fees that we collect doing payroll for other small uh, county agencies like the solid waste district. Should I pause here and ask if there are any questions about these two slides or uh, keep going? I have a real minor question, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, one of the, one of the things that you did for us was when we wanted to form the the Franklin County Electrical Aggregation. You know, we we hired you essentially from some grant money that I got separately. But it was you know you you contracted out to us to do a service for us to to go out for a bid for us and then review the bids. This the tiny piece of it, but boy. We, um, all of the selectmen who were involved in this trusted you, which which is what made a huge difference and allowed people to believe that that we, you know the bids and the broker that we ended up contracting with was chosen very fairly. And and I don't know where that money would fall in here, but it was this very unusual service that you provided. I thought, and I really appreciated it. I think we did that with the. Um with the frontier track as well, right? Similar, similar program. Yeah, yeah. So th to answer your, your implied question, uh, Mr. Armstrong, that would be, we would have called that an external contract because it was an individual contract with the town of Conway um, outside of a established municipal program or outside of our administrative, our administrative budget. So that would have been in the solid gray 47% of our revenue volume. Thanks. So let me move on to the municipal service programs because Bob asked about them. Um, the municipal service programs are all voluntary opt-in. Conway opts into all of them. And um, each one has a different assessment based on what the program does and, and what is a fair and equitable way to assess for the programs. And it's really the intent of the programs are to help provide municipal services for positions that are hard for the municipalities to fill, often because they are very part-time. So collective purchasing, unless you stop me, I'm gonna go pretty quickly through the ones that have no budget increase. Collective purchasing has no increase in FY22, your price is 2000 
$426 and you participate in highway products and services, dog tags, fire alarm testing, and, high, and you have used it, as you guys pointed out, for some special procurement services. The Cooperative Public Health Service, Phil, this is really where we were prepared to talk about the troubles with our budget and no one asked about this. The Cooperative Public Health Service is our regional health district, has 16 towns members now, and we are doing the contact tracing um, and COVID case monitoring for 19 towns. Because of COVID, this program has expanded staffing and its FY22 budget went up quite a lot. This is why, primarily why Conway is seeing overall, when you combine all the assessments together, why Conway's price is going up, because the assessment increase approved by the CPHS Oversight Committee is a 20% increase to account for the staffing anticipated that is needed to run the health district efficiently and effectively. What, what we um, did realize after the council meeting and after some um, it, interesting discussion and conversation at the council meeting is that one flaw that we have in our budgeting system is that this budget was approved by the oversight committee and we assumed that that corresponded, that the members of the oversight committee were talking to select board members and finance committee members in their towns. And we are not positive that that happened. And what we will do next year is start the budgeting process for programs like this earlier so that we can have better confidence before we go before the council with the full budget that council members, select board members, and finance committee members are aware of what's happening in these municipal service programs. Any questions on that one? Because this is the, this is a big increase. So does this include the, tr the Treehouse Vaccination Center at Channing Beat? Is, is that w one of the programs that FERCOG is doing? Yeah, the way, um, Yes and no, Bob, that our emergency preparedness program is really doing all of the logistical planning. But yes, Lisa White, the nurse, will be the vaccine manager at the Deerfield sites. On, at the, anytime there's a Deerfield clinic, she will be the vaccine manager. And the first two clinics are this Thursday and Friday, thanks to a lot of snowstorms around the country. So can I, can I ask whether FERCOG ever, I mean, uh, ever applied for CARES Act or TESSER or TESSER II funding? Um, and if you did, what those funds were applied to? Because just when I see something like this, a co which is looks on its face to be a, a, a COVID expense, um, I, I wonder about w to what extent there was additional uh, um, compensation sought on that, on that end. Yeah, we actually did expand staffing in during COVID and we are using grant funds for that staffing expansion. We have um, two, three, three additional nurses and another person that is doing exclusively doing contact tracing for us. And all of that is being covered by grants. The FY22 budget does not include that extra staffing it assumes a full-time nurse, a part-time nurse, and two full-time health agents. And um, it was the expansion of the, one of our health agents going to full-time and one, and the addition of a part-time nurse that really is creating the increase to this budget in FY22 and is, um, it was the oversight committee's decision that that was the level of staffing that was needed for the district. Now, yeah. if we get more grants, um, we will apply the grants and, and we will not maintain the extra staffing unless we have grants. Yeah, that, that's the key, you know, like Deerfield, all the towns kind of in the, 
in the health district, which Deerfield belongs to as well, um, did an MOU with the FERCOG to give additional CARES, CARES money to them to fund, you know, we had, we had some heavy loads. They worked a lot in Deerfield. And so we recognized that what we had initially planned out wasn't enough money. So we're, we're trying to help in that way. Um, but I, I guess uh, FY22, we just don't know if there'll be any more grant money coming. We think there will be, but we just don't know. So we couldn't budget that all of that would have been paid for until we get it. You know, if we got it, then I'm sure there would be some adjustment, you know, down the road. But it was hard to plan for it without knowing it would be there. So, so then is it fair to say that the 20% increase is a one-time only thing and that it's going to go back to the baseline the year, the, the following year? I don't, I, I don't think I can comfortably say that. I think that the um, oversight committee, the, the 15 or 16 towns that oversee this program and decide what level of staffing and services needed would make that decision. The staff certainly will go with a recommendation, but, but particularly with this health district, it is the towns that participate that decide the budget and staffing level. Would you agree with that, Trevor? Yes. Yeah, it's really up to the towns to decide what they, how, how much they want to be involved and if they think it's a value and if not, they find another solution or, um, yeah. And hope, you know, hopefully we could come down, but just we've recognized that we have underfunded public health for so long now that the state is looking at, you know, funding this better and looking at, you know, after this complete disaster of realizing that there was no funding for public health in the state, they are looking at ways to do that, but there's never really any money. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I don't know how much help we'll get from the state down the road. We hope that there are, you know, there are some programs. I probably, Linda knows this better than me, that, um, but there are, you know, the state is looking at other ways to fund public health. Mm -hmm. Massachusetts is one of the only states in the country that doesn't provide state funding to local boards of health. And certainly the pandemic illustrated in Massachusetts that that was not smart. And so there is lots of legislation now being considered and being advocated for that would provide state funding to health districts. And I would say, Phil, if that passes and there is, there really is a stronger public health system in all of Massachusetts, I would expect this budget goes down. Yeah. But we didn't create the budget assuming that legislation passed because it hasn't passed for the last hundred years. Again, I, I just want to, I'm sorry, I just want to clar clarify, and it's probably clear to most, but just in case to underline it, that the oversight committee that we're referring to in each case is the over is the um, collaborative uh, um, representative membership of each of the towns and the oversight committee for that particular function, not the finance committee of the Council of Governments. Um, we simply review um, those specific budgets and work it into the general budget. Thanks, Jay. Good point. I had a less budget related question if, if I can here, but I was surprised to see tick testing on this list because I associate tick testing with the extension service down at UMass. And do you, you, are you taking that over for them or? No, we have a partnership with them. Uh -huh. right. Okay. Should I move on? Great. Okay. Franklin County Cooperative Inspection Program. This is your building plumbing and wiring inspection. There will be no increase in FY22, level funded at $7,600. Um, and you can see on the left-hand side, the building activity that was covered by that program. I'm gonna move on unless you have questions. Town accounting is another program that has gone up. Um, this is by far, by far our most challenging program to staff. Um, it is hard to find accountants. It is hard to find accountants with municipal experience. It is hard to find accountants that are good, that are willing to accept public sector salaries. And so this is the program that is most driven by market forces. Um, 
We are anticip we have built a budget that is a 4.3% increase and that really is exclusively based on finding staff and the cost to bring staff to the program. Um, as you probably know, the assessment that you get, um, your almost $31,000 assessment includes staff, but also uh, access to the software that COG owns and we give to all of our participating accounting towns via a license agreement. Question on that one, because that, is, that one is increasing. Yeah, that it's increasing. I, um, you know, but when eight eight hours a week times thirty thousand is one hundred and fifty a year, and I, I mean the four. I get I guess so. One hundred and forty didn't do it, but one hundred and fifty will. I, I I don't know. Um, I, I I understand the dilemma. It, there there definitely is not enough people in this profession. I I totally agree with that, and I'm not dissatisfied with the town services either. Um, I, quite the opposite. Um. The, I'm sorry, the service provided to the town. I, I, I think it's uh, the, the, the gentleman that's doing it now, I, 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 I nothing but compliments for, but, um, but my goodness, that is a high number. Well, remember Phil, that it is, it's the person's salary plus their health insurance and other benefit costs plus the cost to, for the COG to run the program plus for the costs of the annual software fee and all of the software costs that we are paying. I uh, totally agree with you. It's an expensive program. We, we have tried to give this program to a municipality. Any of you, you would like the program, please, please take it. <laughs> um, because part of what part of what we charge is that we have to cover all of our costs. If, if, as would Conway, but Conway wouldn't, um, because you likely pool the cost to run town hall and pool the cost to offer health insurance, the total cost of employees is, is I assume in your case, rarely calculated. We calculate it all the time to make sure that we know exactly the cost of every staff person. And when you add health insurance and other benefits, you are basically doubling the salary. Yeah, we, no, we, we do calculate that. Our schools calculate that. Our town calculates that. Oh, good. We, so we, you fight, know over, that, we fight over scraps from the table in this town. Yeah. But, so you know that no, it's the, the, you basically- The, the town does not salary. calculate that, sorry. I'm sorry? <laughs> Uh, sorry, the, Phil, the town does not calculate the cost per employee. Um, uh, maybe the school does, but the town certainly doesn't. No, not, in, not in a line item way, but in a, uh, in a, hey, this is how much it's all costing us way we do. Um, okay. We have programs with UMass to try to increase the number of municipal accountants. UMass does an annual training program that all municipal accountants um, have to go through at least once. We actually have a grant now that we're working with Greenfield Community College to um, start a certificate program to really work with the accounting students and try to encourage them to go into municipal service. At this point, the idea would be a municipal accounting certificate, not in a, a municipal accounting degree, but it would be great if we could move it into something bigger. This is the lack of municipal accountants is true across all of Massachusetts. I sat on a committee with the Lieutenant Governor that really specifically looked at the lack of municipal financial staff and with the retirement of baby boomers, the crisis that this is putting towns in. And so it's, it's a really hard program and it's hopefully the certificate um, program at GCC will improve the candidate pool. And what about looking beyond Massachusetts? 
I mean, I can't imagine this is a problem that's unique just to like municipalities in our state. Um, or candidates? Yeah. Oh, we do. <laughs> we do. Um, so it's not just, it's not a Massachusetts problem. It's sort of like a nationwide problem. I don't know about everywhere, but certainly it's a New England problem by the, by the people that I work with throughout New England. The um, municipal workforce is kind of in crisis as baby boomers are retiring. Well, and you and see, you we need to all do a better job of somehow recruiting people to municipal service. And mm -hmm. you see, the uh, MMA is focusing heavily on you know ad campaigns and, and stuff they're running at, at the different functions to get people to get into municipal you know service at, at all you know other than just the, what we get for huge salaries. <laughs> <It's all laughs> tears, but. The people who actually run the accountants, it. boy. If we, accountants, one thing they'll have is job security. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Any of that stuff, town administrators, all of it. Yeah. Yep. So, questions on this? Should I keep going? You can go on. Yeah. Okay. So, moving to our general fund budget, um, in recognition that that uh, we knew towns were struggling because of the revenue impacts from COVID. We, we created a budget that we could decrease the regional services assessment so that there is a membership assessment decrease of 5.5%. We balance that with the other goals that we have, which is to keep the COG competitive with our peers. So we built in a 2.5% salary increase and back to Claire's slide earlier, the way we're affording a reduction in the membership assessment is because we anticipate an increase in indirect revenues from our grants. We don't have steps, we don't have merit increases. We've built some special projects into the budget, which includes um, first light relicensing advocacy. As you all, I hope, know, we are migrating from the Franklin County Emergency Communication System to the state system. So we've built some staff time in to monitor and manage that transition. We've built some money in for COVID vaccination clinics into hopefully not very far into FY22, but some money in for that. And then as Phil knows, and as Phil was not that happy with, we've also built a communication position into the budget. And honestly, I really, we were prepared to talk about the cooperative public health service increase and I was not expecting the communication position to be an issue. So let me try to give a better explanation of it. Um, number one, we recognized that as a gap in our staffing for the past several years. And that was especially highlighted at the onset of COVID when the COG was really expected to uh, provide reg regular communications, to provide situational reports, to be the convener of all stakeholders. And we realized that we just didn't have the capacity to do that as well and as effectively as we wanted to do. And then it was, um, reinforced again because we've been working for about a year on an orga organizational assessment to really look at how we should be organized and structured both to anticipate um, upcoming retirements but also because we basically evolved over time as programs grew without thought more like with reaction and the organizational assessment also identified a communication person. And then since that, since the council meeting, actually, the last reinforcement of that is that we are in the midst of creating an economic resiliency plan for Franklin County. And that started with a survey to municipalities, businesses, and nonprofits. And the results of that survey is that um, the COG is the second highest ranking place where businesses, nonprofits, and municipalities look for information, second only to mass.gov. Um, and so we realize that the communications person um, 
it isn't a PR person, Phil, as much as really managing the communications, being our public information officer during emergency, in times of non-emergency, really um, enhancing our website, which people hate, including me, working on social media, again, to kind of do, do the job of attracting millennials and younger people to municipal service, to the idea of, of working for government, et cetera. And so I know, Phil, that you thought that was kind of tone deaf to add that position in. Um, we actually don't think that. We think that it is really a critical position and that COVID has really highlighted the importance of that position. Um, and we were very careful to add it in a year that we were decreasing the membership assessment so that towns knew that we weren't putting that cost on the backs of the towns. We were covering it through other COG revenue. Do you want to add anything, right. Bill? Um, I, I, I kind of, you know, I, I'm okay with, I'm okay with losing an argument in a public setting and, and having something vote against what I wanted to do and moving on. It's all right. Um, um but the, 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 uh, uh, you know, the, the, and, and I, you know, like I said, I, I was persuaded of the usefulness of the position. Um, and the, 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 the I thought, 49, it was budgeted for 49,000 for 20 hours per week. I thought that was high. And um, it, because I know what the town is offering for full-time employment right now. And, um, and then I see right above it that you're competing with peer organizations, not towns, but um, you know, it, 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 the, the, it still has an effect on towns. And I, it's, um, you know, and, and it's, the, the, the whole thing, you know, I, the, the, we, we as a culture have fragmented information sources. I think the, the, whole, the whole notion of, um, you know, um, tr tr trying to, you know, do more and more platforms makes sense, but it, it, it's the only way to go about it. But at the same time, it's, it just seems so hopeless because half the people that come to a meeting will always say that they had no idea that this was happening. And it just doesn't matter the Herculean efforts that you go to. Um, I, I, if, I just, I ha, having worked in marketing and communications for like the past 20 years, and that's not even like, that's not even where I intended to go with my career. But um, I mean, like, I see this as sort of like a no brainer. I mean, every organization, um, a foundation, a corporation, I mean, you have to have you really have to have a, a solid communication strategy. And I think that this is, I mean, I've, I've spent enough time without a person doing this kind of work that I really appreciate the kind of work that this role does. And I think people don't often appreciate it. You know, it's like, oh my God, like you're just gonna have someone just be doing, you know, Facebook and Twitter and like, why are we paying money for that? It's not just that. It's really, um, I mean, it's having a whole communications strategy and i think that's absolutely critical especially for an organization like the FERCOG. so i this to me this is a no-brainer <laughs> and remember that the forty-nine thousand is it is part-time but it's we we assumed it a benefited position so it is not a forty-nine thousand dollar salary for a part-time person it's um a part-time person plus benefits in fact it was surprising when there was actually a motion at the council meeting to make it a full-time position rather than part-time. Because I think the other thing is we recognize it's going to, it's hard to attract a part-time person to do, you know, really what's a full-time work. I mean, there's so much to communicate out of the FERCOG, I think. And with good communication, uh, you will you will then grow the advocacy and grow possibly the grants coming because people recognize what you're doing and um, you know, I think it will pay for itself in the long run. At least I think that's that's the hope is that it would really drive us to to bring in more grants and show the community what what the FERCOG does and um, and be a lot more consistent in that message that goes out. I'm going to move forward. Okay. Claire, Claire does tables. No. <laughs> 
So uh, I just, I love this graph and it took me a long time to figure out how to do it. So I put it in twice. Uh, it's in, <laughs> here it is for the FY22 budget projection, which we, um, the council did approve at the end of January. Again, in solid gray, the projected portion of our budget that will come from grants in contracts, municipal service programs in the hashed gray, and the general fund in orange, which gets blown out so that you can see the three parts of um, three types of revenue that will fund our general fund in FY22. Um, I just, I, I like this slide because it, I think it shows you how we turn 6% of our revenue, which is around $480,000 in this projection into something that's going to be seven to 8 million of benefit for the county. And again, you'll see assessments, uh, just to say again, the assessments are 6% of this projection, where in FY20 it was 7% because we uh, made that decrease in this part of the budget for the towns. And then Claire, it's a table, so it must be yours. <laughs> so one more way to look at the net effect on Conway, I pulled out your regional assessment, which goes down by $926. That's that 5.6%. Um, I should have added a decimal place to the percentage point for consistency. The accounting program gets an increase and the CPHS program increase. So your total, and then the three programs that will be level assessed from FY21 to FY22, and the total increase for Conway is $2,050. I think that's all we have, isn't it? Except, well, this is, this is hard to read. This is the whole county, so you can see where Conway fits in the whole county, and then we're done unless there Thank are more you. questions. Can you go back to that previous slide with the pie chart? Oh, the pie chart? Yeah, I like that chart, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Final questions? So just one of the things that I just, you know, I, I, I support the, the, for the, the work that FERC is doing, that you provide services that we cannot provide on our own and, um, and, and that they're valuable services. And, um, you know, um, I, the, I, 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 I do also recognize that your budget is like next level complexity um, and, 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 uh, just just because your revenue comes from so many different sources and your expenses go to so many different sources and I, I I get the complexity of it I did really wish that that there was sort of more democracy involved in the budget process with the count that the council the council budget process I think I, I spoke at that at length with Trevor um, about that that um, you know that, that there was no that we had a budget hearing that there was sort of no ability for the institutional for the institution to adjust on the fly, um, and and I and you know so, so so that maybe we should have had multiple budget hearings. Um, yeah. The, the other thought I had, Phil, after our discussion was I wasn't sure who from Conway or, or how many people sit on the finance committee. Or I think the discussion that we had with at FERCOG was that yes, we should. We should have a pre-town meeting a lot, a lot, a lot like we have our town meeting. You know, we have a pre-town meeting. We go over the stuff. We get all those questions answered from finance and capital and the general public, and then we go to town meeting like the next night or a couple nights later, or a week later, and everybody had time to digest and answer those questions. Um, Are you going to do that and I'm feel fine. feel gonna... better about that? Uh, yeah. processed. And, and I think we recognize that, Phil, that it was kind of like, even though every town had a participation in setting up the final budget, like when we got to the council, we showed up and we're like, oh, <laughs> here's the budget we're approving with some discussion, but really not, you know. Yeah. So I think that um, and maybe um, Conway, 
I don't know how many people sit or if anyone from Conway sits on the finance or not, or if, if, depends on how many towns. I'm not sure the structure, but that might help. And then, um, but definitely having a pre-town meeting, I think would, would help a lot and kind of, you, you'd see that stuff so before we went and voted. We can definitely try that again. We've, we've tried that in years past and we haven't been able to get, can I stop sharing the screen? Hmm, sure. Um, can I? I can't get um, my- Could you do that? Like, yeah. yeah. Woo. Um, we've tried that before. We can try that again. We do use the October council meeting to present how the budget works. And we, we use the October council meeting to present a budget development workbook. So people have a very good understanding of how, what is our budget? Where does it go to? How are we using it, et cetera? That doesn't address what you're saying, Phil, because that really looks backwards so that we can give a thorough understanding of the COGS finances. We can go back to trying to do a pre-budget meeting like Trevor's talking about. We Certainly, Claire and I would be happy to have that. Um, and we'll try again and hope that people attend it and give us feedback. Because, because, Phil, if something like that, if we had done a pre-meeting and the communications person really was, was a big question, we would have time to either adjust the budget or spend more time to, to do what I just did, which is mm -hmm. explain it better why we think it's important, et cetera. But it is hard for us to adjust the budget in a council meeting because it's like adjusting a budget on town meeting floor. It's just not easy or smart. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. I, um, you know, I, but um, the, the flip side of that is that that elected officials do occasionally have nuggets of wisdom that are that that, that would surprise you, I think, um, <laughs> although maybe not. The, the, you know, I, I was also surprised, though, I do that the overall level of budget literacy amongst the the the, the group, I was just Wow, um, you know, not not the Furcog people. The Furcog people, yeah, but the elected officials from some of the towns that just really struggled with nuance things like nuance and complexity. Um, so, I, uh, but but not all of us do. I'd like to think, and there's a lot of us with real budget chops. And um, you know, I, I, um, I, well, and I. I totally agree and I totally respect that, but just to say that it, we aren't, the staff aren't doing it in isolation. We are mm -hmm. working with the personnel committee, the executive committee, the finance committee. We are having meetings from October to January to develop the budget with those three committees. And so um, it's not done in isolation for sure. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, uh, so the, the, budget, like the, the budget that's presented is, is, is you know, that 3% increase is, is that's, that's, the, that's what it costs for government to continue to its operations. And, um, and to those that are, that, that are asking, even when, when you do the math, the percentage the con, uh, of the new uh, communications person that Conway would absolutely actually be paying through through their assessment I, I tried to do the math and I, it was like, it was, Double I'm not going to say infinitesimal, <laughs> but um, it was just not significant. Um, right. And so, you know, it's okay. All right. Um, and it um, seems like that communications person was the, 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 the big issue or the, the strongest battle, the strongest issue that came it up generated the most conversation both pro and con uh -huh. yeah like uh -huh. it, it it was the the mayor was like erica that the mayor was saying i can't believe the cog doesn't have one already this is such a critical position mm -hmm. i can't believe you can find somebody to take a <laughs> slice <laughs> of linda yeah. and a slice of <laughs> you know peggy sloan we don't and, know that we can uh, Bob. Uh, yeah we well, I not we could try, but I, but I mean, actually, for I, having worked in this field again, like very optimistic that you can find someone who can do this very important work. 
It sounds like Erica's Erica's uh, <laughs> recruit. Ready, ready, oh, recruit. I guess like recruit. Erica's volunteering <laughs> to be on the interview oh. committee. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that would be good. Would be you be fun. taking somebody from inside Frickog and making them that position? I don't think so. Maybe there's one person that might have the skill set, but be, but but they work full time and this is a part time position, uh -huh. and yeah, so yeah, yeah. then we would have to do some machinations to make it. I, so I'm not. I don't. I don't know. Good luck. Yeah. I have a question about an earlier slide. Uh, the community public health service. You. Yep. You justified it by a 20% increase because of COVID. What is the COVID experience in our 16 town Conway or the Conway participates in? What is roughly a thumbnail sketch of our COVID experience? Uh, you have any idea? Would that number come up 20 instead of 25 or 30 or 15 or 10? Where did the number come from? I, I don't. I, I wasn't involved in the budget preparation discussions for cooperative public health, so maybe Trevor or Claire know. Well, it, really was, it was adding this, the, you know, the nurse public nursing is really, you know, the COVID tracing and the and having realizing that we were working Lisa literally 24 hours a day, and and we needed to add staff to be able to support that public. Um, that that contact tracing and you know following up you know looking at maven every day inputting the data calling shelburne control uh at every you know every address so that you know emts and everybody knew you know what was where and then um you know then contact tracing everybody in that incidence um we realized we needed more help to do that so we we had hired more staff for that and thinking that that's going to continue into 2022 um, and then also realizing that Lisa cannot always be the only vaccine manager to do all the clinics for what's coming up, um, you know, for, for the vaccination clinics, we, we definitely need help there. We're relying heavily on a lot of volunteers, but there is obviously some other, some other. Um, I had to understand from news reports the state was doing the clinics. Is no. the state not setting up the clinics? No. I mean, well, they are doing some, but nowhere near enough. Like, there's there's really nothing in Franklin County uh, at all. Um, if if it isn't for for this group to to set up, uh, we you know we've partnered as as this group to to apply for um, any vaccine any vaccine doses we can. We started through Greenfield to get the all the EMTs started first, and then we're trying to set up you know Treehouse, the Deerfield site. Um, and we're hoping we can continue that. And I don't know what phase three looks like. And we hope, you know, I, I would hope to see some help from the federal government trickle through the state to us to, to really get this stuff going. But right now it's been crickets. Um, and Steve, it was really, it, you're right. What you've, what you've been reading is true that Franklin County is in a unique situation that we were the only county that had no mass vaccination site or large regional site being funded by the state. And so it was really a legislative push that the COG and Greenfield could form a regional partnership and that that will be how there are clinics in Franklin County. So we have a unique situation that we are providing the service instead of the state. So is this money for COVID um, to state and local governments included in the federal legislation, part of what you're looking for? Is that what's coming? Is that coordinating with this or what? There's well, supposed in Biden's plan, money yeah. for, for um, helping local and state organizations. Yes. Right. Is that included in us? In the in our FY22 budget? No. Well, I don't know when it comes. <laughs> that's the other thing. Well, that, that's, that's why I was wondering if that's what you meant. We did not assume that more, fed, more state or federal relief is coming when we developed that FY22 budget for the Cooperative Public Health Service. We hope there will be state and federal fundings that will be brought in that can offset the cost of that budget, but we have no guarantee of that. And so we built the budget 
with the level of staffing and service that the towns required. And would okay. reduce, I think, if, if we got some help. Claire, do you want to add anything to that? I just wanted to add that one of the <clears throat> other elements of increased expense is um, more hours for the health inspectors and agents. They're finding an increase in volume is going with uh, Title V and other types of health inspections and permits um, related to the pandemic or not, that they uh, um, needed to fund those positions more fully in that budget. They used to have some grant funding that fell away called um, FDA for food safety. Mm -hmm. food safety. Um, and so the assessments essentially also went up a tick to compensate for grant funding lost. Most of the reservations that I know people have gotten were at our smaller local, you know, the, the regional or the, or, you know, the board of health clinics, not at the Springfield clinic, which is the only really large state clinic here in Western Mass. That's the one I went to. I got shots there. Yeah. At the clinic, at the Eastfield Mall. But, but m most of the people have gotten the reservation at, at the Mohawk or at UMass or, uh, the, or Greenfield Senior Center. Uh, and I think that you guys just sold out rat quickly your whole recent set of slots that you had available. Oh, instant. Instant, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. In 10 minutes. Yeah, we, we, need, we need more help from the state. We need, yeah. they need to recognize that we need to get moving here. We've got a lot of people to do and not enough time. A million <laughs> baby boomers all joined on Thursday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question of Phil if he's still there? Oh, yeah. Phil. Yeah. And I, I'm a member of the finance committee in the town. So, Phil, I, I uh, before we, the folks from the FERCOG leave, I, I, st I sense a, just a general sort of sense of unease about the FERCOG budget. Do you care to elaborate any further than you have, of which, um, or maybe, maybe summarize it in a few points? If, if that's the case, or is there no unease about it? It's, I don't know if unease is the thing. I, you know, I, I come from the perspective that the budget is the way a community expresses its priorities. And then the budget is also the uh, 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 looking at looking at a budget provides a snapshot in a way of an organization's past, of an organization's present, and, it, and, and what an organization wants to do in the future. Um, and so to, to, to me, I have not actually seen the budget um, and that, uh, you know, I've, I've seen just, you know, the, 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 what, what we saw as a council group was the similar, uh, uh, you know, the uh, PowerPoint things. And, you know, I, I, I know my way around budgets. I can, I'm fully, you know, able to read it and um, make substantial headway through it. So to, to, to me, like I, uh, but 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 I, I can also tell you from being at that meeting that, that I'm, I'm in the minority. Most of the people at those meetings just want to want those meetings over with, and they want them. You know, they the the they're they're good to go. Um, they've seen what the bottom line number is. That's that's what they want, and um, there there wasn't that much interest uh, in 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 budgeteering, um, if, which is what I call it. Uh, so the, fr from the elected officials. And so, so I, I think that in a way that the way, the way they do it is responsive to the majority of the people in the room. Um, but it, it, um, I, I, I always thought that there was a lot more for me to learn. And, you know, as, as someone who wants to be, you know, um, to, 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 I support the work of the organization. I'd like to be able to advocate it for it with more specificity. Um, but a few, but the PowerPoint stuff doesn't remember what it's, that's not what I remember, the budget stuff I remember. Um, and I, and I'm, I, I, you know, I spend a lot of time every year with these big organizational budgets and I, I'm, I'm okay reading it and Didn't coming up with questions and, and, and learning a lot from it. And I think 
this the part of the, the whole thing about the irony of the communications person to share more of what they do. I think the budget would do that a lot too. Um, it, that was just a starting point for the council to to to, to talk about. Um, so go ahead, Trevor. Well, I'm confused because I had we've all had the full budget. I mean, we have every line item that they're looking at. I mean, what, what this this PowerPoint was not the budget. So I'm wondering if you just never looked at the budget because there's every single line in it, every single department and what they're spending it on and what the, I mean, literally every part of the budget's there. So I just didn't know if you didn't get that document or if, if maybe, maybe that's part of the issue too is that you didn't get, you know, you didn't get all that. Apparently. Yeah, I mean, so, that's what I'm wondering because we, we all had, you know, at the council, we all had, you know, time to review that beforehand. So we knew, my we bad. Lynn, okay, well then, Linda, never mind. <laughs> oh, we, I mean, we can get that for you. Well, uh, I mean, it's not. We've learned a lot um, between yeah. the council meeting and the analysis that we've done afterwards and their plans for next year. So let me resend you the 15-page document of numbers, as detailed and thorny as you want to get into it. Um, and I'll resend that to you tomorrow, Phil. That'd be great. Thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah. So that was. Uh, yeah. I, the, um, this is my. I haven't. This is my first year on the Fur High Council, and um, like every, any other institution, it's got its own rhythms, and yeah. uh, you know, it's that's that's what that's what's always hard for the first year is just to sort of understand where where you can add value and where you should just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> so, no, we, um, I think we also learn from outside, you know, fresh eyes looking at a process. And, you know, I think your discussion at the council meeting and, you know, we, we all learn from that. And so, okay, we should present differently and, and you get better that way. So I'm glad you speak up. So, you know, when you get your uh, budget tomorrow, would you just forward it on to me? I'd like to look at it as to where the new member of the finance committee. Mm, sure. Thank you. You know, so is I, there I, anything I, else for Linda? We still got a lot of meeting stuff to do. Yep. So I don't, hey, I'm Erica. not. Thank, thank yeah. you for allowing yeah. us to join. Yeah, yeah thank no, you. thank you. Thank you, Claire and Linda. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, you Linda. Good you all. Trevor. Good night. Have a good night. Thank, thank, you. thank you all. Good, good night. Claire. You're welcome to stay. I'm not kicking you out. Just <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> I'm, I'm sure I have another meeting <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Take care. Bye-bye, Trevor. So we're continuing on our joint meeting with the finance committee. And one of the things we wanted to do was talk about the, uh, the new shelving that is going to go into the vault. Tricia, do you want to talk about this or do you want me to talk about it? I'll let you start, Bob. <laughs> okay. So, so this was a request from Lee and it is for about $20,000. And she just didn't realize that she should have called it capital equipment. So, and I think it was in the budget from last year and it just sort of, uh, it should have been in, in one of our capitals requests. Uh, so here we are. Um, and, and it's basically that there's a set of old um, shelves inside the vault where things that you wouldn't want to burn if the building caught fire can reside and fairly fireproof as I'm sure required by all kinds of state laws. And, uh, and, and, and so Lee has been talking about how can we change the way the shelves are, are organized or made. And she's found uh, um, uh, you know, some vendors that produce shelves. And I, I don't know whether all of you got the, the floor plan of what these shelves would look like, but basically they're, they're six foot tall, one foot or so wide, four, maybe eight, no, maybe uh, there's two of them next to each other, each about four feet long, and they slide back and forth on tracks. And so to me, it feels like what happens when you're looking for something in your closet and you see the shirt that you want, but it's got two sh a shirt on either side of it, and to get it out, you spread things apart, you make a space inside all of the clothes in your closet, and then you can reach in there and take out the shirt you want. So, so all of these shelves are 
are all right next to each other, but there's a little bit of space in between in between two of them, and you can move the shelves around so that where that where you can put that space library. Hmm? It's like a university library, basically. Yeah. It could be. I don't know University of the Library, but I thought it was a great idea. And it's going to increase by over 50% the amount of shelving space that's available inside this vault. And, and, and it's just something that Conway's been desperate to do. We have a lot of things upstairs in the, in the old gymnasium that need to come down into the vault. I don't know, Tom, how much we have over in the town office. It should be over in the vault. But, but it will be a tremendous increase in shelf space. Uh, so she went. Yeah, we, we're, she we're, went we're overflowing here at the town office with the, the amount of financial records that we're required to keep for seven years. So she sent out a bid and she got a bid back that she from the company that she expects is going to have the highest bid. And that's the number of about 20 is it 22, 20,000 that she was asking for. And that may not be the final vendor that we buy the shelving from. If we approve that amount of money in town meeting, then, then we'll do a harder search for the actual vendor that we want to have come in and, and, and buy the shelving and install the shelving. But so. With, with, Bob, with respect, that's, that's, that's going to be an attitude that town meeting, I, um, that, uh, you know, I think it's a lot better if we they, if the if the cheaper price is fine. That just do, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say it like that. Just be open to like doing the cheaper price first and presenting it to town meeting from the perspective of we're tr the, look we've done the work because the the once it's approved the incentive to then tr try to get the bet this is what people at town meeting will say the incentive to then get the best deal disappears it's approved just get the one that you like and that you know is it's expensive but it's whatever so the it, it it's just from just from the 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 ability to i don't want to say sell it at town meeting but to advocate it for a town meeting it's a it's a stronger position of advocacy to say look we've done all the work this is the price that you know this is the cheapest price the best price we've contacted five different vendors blah blah blah, blah and this is what we want to do and what once that 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 little element of we're getting that we're trying we're trying hard to get the best deal that's like the sub that's the key that unlocks the permission of town meeting i really believe that so even though we are trying um, just, to get just just a uh, did just a couple of things on that first we'll still have to go out for quotes as part of the procurement process and and we'll have to get you know the least cost that we um you know, for, for what it is we want. We'll, we'll, we'll put together a good uh, scope of, of what we want and we'll have to take the least cost that we get. Um, that said, prices could also go up. So, um, you know, most quotes are only good for 30 days or, or 60 or at the very longest 90 days uh, and, and uh, usually 30 days. So that's, um, that's one reason for going ahead this way. Or two reasons, I should say. Uh, Alan here. Sorry if I'm late. I have hi, a quick Alan. question. Hi, hi, everyone. Hi, Bob. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, I guess for the Capital Improvements Committee, scanning documents, old documents, to PDF. There are companies that provide that service. Is that is that allowed? I know I have a situation with federal government grants. We have to keep records for seven years, and it does create a lot of uh, needed. A, you know, box for storage, but is there any way that we could, is that, is that a possibility? And also, if we have to stick with shelving, is this something which is like a recommended best practice? Have we been cited by the uh, Department of Revenue or something for not, for not doing this? Do you know? I don't know, but we are obligated to store things for a long time and we're running out of space. Yeah. And I guess we're, Alan, we're, I'm wrestling with the same thing in my job that uh, we're debating getting a scanning service for these old old documents to scan into a PDF, and um, that way it takes up a lot less space because eventually the world is going to go there. We could start. This might come up at town meeting. That's all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alan, Fr Fr Frontier recently priced out scanning services for similar reasons, and I can tell you 
from looking at the bids or the estimates that came in, it is far less expensive for the shelving system than it is for the for for, for the, uh, the 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 ser those services are wow um, expensive. It's the same reason we haven't converted the Conway Library to <laughs> electronic. Yeah. I'm just asking because and invariably people are going to ask that question at town meeting. Maybe. Yeah. We have no choice. I agree, but I'm sure that question will be asked by at least a couple of fellow town members. Ideally, thank you. Ideally, in my my esteemed opinion, uh, and I'm somebody with a technological background, even a, uh, I stuff happens. Do I need to say? I mean. There's nothing like a paper original. Uh, I, I understand you can have a fire or whatnot, but ideally you'd have both. You'd have an electronic copy and you'd have the physical copy. Um, and, that, and then that covers your butt for, well, we, we, we've only be, just begun to see the chaos and disaster that can and probably will result from all kinds of events. I can't, I won't even go into them here, but you know, we store stuff, uh, I, we back up stuff to Amazon I, I, in my business. I, and it's, it's, it's not a given, it's none of it is a given, I'm sorry to say. These are businesses, there's individuals that work in the businesses. Um, it, it's, it's a scary frontier, it, it really, really is. And I'm, you know, uh, yeah, that's just my, my two cents here. You can't just go galloping into the cloud with PDFs or whatever and think that it's all it's all cool. Because then you, what you really have to do, you have to back up what's in there. And you need to back it up with a separate entity, not the same entity that it's in there. And then you got to make sure you're in data centers that are spread out around the globe so that you cover. I, I mean, I could go on. I don't want to take up the meeting time. But I, I vote for the shells at whatever the cost. <laughs> Eric, yeah, I mean, I, we're not going to do a vote tonight, but I'm, I'm, no, I'm I, on board with Roy. And uh, <laughs> well, there are companies I got wiped out who were in the World Trade Towers after 9-11 who uh, didn't do, they only had paper. Of course, uh, that was destroyed. And a bunch of companies went out of business. So I hear what you're saying. Roy. No. Yeah. Tricia, do you want to add anything? <laughs> You do like calling. She does. So I actually went and looked at the vaults. It's a mess. There's a bunch of stuff that shouldn't be in there. And um, it's really a town asset. It's the only fireproof one. I'm pretty sure the one at uh, town office is not fireproof. And, you know, to um, Roy's point and Phil's point, um, microfiching and archiving and scanning is unbelievable expensive right now. Um, but that, and I sent a long email to Roy and Bob and Tom after I went and looked at it, um, that really it shouldn't just be viewed as a storage place for the assessor's records. It should be for all town departments in terms of records that they may, need to preserve. And, you know, things like when we expect a hurricane or something like that, the painting in town hall, town offices should go in that vault, things like that. Um, so the other thing is, you know, town, certain town records need to be kept in perpetuity. Payroll records, um, if you had old ones that when you had an in-town accountant or treasurer, property tax records, assessor's records, they need to be kept forever. There's no seven year rule for those. Um, so an intelligent approach to organizing shelving. The vault space is ideal. I think Lee's to be commended for bringing uh, the idea forward, but it shouldn't be just viewed as for assessor's records. There's quite a bit of space there. Definitely more bids need to be obtained. I would um, suggest that the Warren article have a not to exceed amount and also that when the RFP, the bids are solicited, that the bids be asked to be remain firm for 90 days, which you can easily do. Um, but would suggest if the finance committee and the select board are in favor, and the capital planning committee is to you know, 
try to get some more quotes between now and whenever town meeting is and start a townwide inventory of what types of materials and other records other town departments may want to store in the vault. But this is actually the third year this request has come from Lee. So um, I don't think we should lose another year to work towards doing it. So I would recommend the town fund it. Tracy, I have a question for you, and that is, do you know where anywhere there's published the uh, statutes? You know, where we deal with government grants, it's written right into the contract about how many years we're to store certain things. And uh, are you aware of is there any place at the Department of Revenue where there's actual written rules, if any, about how many years particular items are to be stored, you know, in physical hard copy? Is that something the local Department of Local Services might know from the Department of Revenue? Yeah, Alan, there, there's a there's a list for all documents and how many years they have to be kept. Thank you. If you can send it along, I'd like to look at it because just, just an idea. As, as background for the town meeting, it might be important to share with people because you know a lot of folks don't think about these things, but uh, you know obviously we have to. Thank you, Trish. This is Steve. Uh, I have a question. Um, do we have any scanning ability at all in the town for some kinds of documents or what? Is there anything a scanner? I have a, I have an insurance business that I haven't used a paper document in over 10 years. And we hundreds of thousands of documents every year that we get. I just cannot, and I have one person doing it and it's everything is scanned and I don't have any paper anymore. I, I eliminated the need for additional space. I'm just well, wondering. I can, if you I can answer that. Who's that? Janet. I can okay. answer that briefly. Uh, Lee requested from the Community Preservation Committee some years ago uh, money for scanning some uh, old, old uh, tax records. And we bought a big flatbed scanner. So, so yes, there is a big town scanner. Is somebody scanning something? Official? Well, a number of years ago under the CPA project, she did have, uh, I think she had a volunteer uh, scanning some of these, you know, these were colonial times tax records. And um, where are they now? Well, you ask Lee, they're, scan they're scanned. And the, I mean, the scan, I, you know, I think she also had some, she got bids from some, a firm. Uh, there's a CPA, a couple of projects on it. She had a little bit of leftover money, but uh, you know it was pretty well researched and and uh, good cases. I think, as I'm recalling, I think maybe they did. S maybe the first year she sent some out to this professional scanner, and maybe they were stored in the vault and someplace else, whatever. Uh, and uh, and then after a while, maybe that company went out of business. And she came back and then bought the scanner. So the exact status of what's been done from what years that uh, I have. I, I, so it, it seems to me the issue is like we basically have to preserve town records and either we do it in a vault with appropriate shelving or we do it some other way through scanning. Um, and that to me seems like a much larger conversation about you know where we're going with storing town records because I think you know like on the one hand it seems like yes obviously we should be scanning things we shouldn't be storing like paper documents but there are there are costs and there are things that are associated with that kind of solution so I mean it, it, if it people at town meetings say oh my god twenty thousand dollars for shelves like that's ridiculous it could possibly be that we try to you know, contract to some company to like store our archival town records for the next, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And it's going to be, you know, $20,000 a year for that. So um, I, I mean, I'm totally happy to support like paying for some shelves while we work this out because I think it's a much, it, it's not just a capital issue to me. It's more, um, I don't know, like a preservation of history issue. <laughs> it's like, how do we go forward with the existing technology and this time. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Erica. I yes. think that uh, uh, I, yeah, I think I think yeah. it's a fair sized discussion because yeah. uh, because I could see this 
the you know, so we get the shelves in and it's going to fill up. I mean, <laughs> you know, especially you make it uh, available to the rest of the town. Uh, we'll fill that thing up probably faster than anybody um, you know could have could think. But of. we could we could we could fill up a digital archive, and as you said, we have to pay for redundancy. We've got to have it backed up in multiple places. And, and you know, medical people store their stuff. You know, they they store medical records offsite uh, typically, and um, you know, it's still it's a private company. They could burn down or who knows. But I, the, obviously, there are companies that specialize in this. I have no idea what the costs, you know. Well, exactly, be. yeah. I mean, yeah. technically it's possible, but we don't yeah. know the, co I mean, the, the but, cost associated with that could be, to me, like way more than, you know, a max of $20,000 right now. Right. It's gonna get right. it for the next five years. It's, yes. it, so it's, we have time to fully it's, investigate. It, it's just a headache. Look, we burn, ta the town, uh, town hall burned down in the 1950s, right? And we lost, some records we didn't lose all of them i don't know the whole story there uh lee knows some of it and we have some pretty old uh ledgers and things that sit uh, uh in the uh, in the town offices um so yeah i mean it's it's just a bit it's a bit it's a discussion for sure it, it's a discussion and it should include the historical commission they yeah. they one of their charges is preservation of historical records or something like that related and they took it very seriously they came in with like a $57,000 plus proposal to the CPA to turn the basement of the library or was that was that phase one or then maybe there was some other storage pot I can't remember the details you know historical research would find it um but their proposal was because it had to be air, you know, it had to be airtight and um, sealed and uh, uh, controlled atmosphere. Yeah. Yes, and I was, I was concerned. I mean, that proposal didn't go forward. I was concerned that some town records are like lots of duplicates of committee meetings. And when and if the town ever addresses this, there should be, you know, clear guidelines or a plan uh, by a librarian or something like that about what you're scanning and where they're going to be saved so that people can find them and that we're not building storage space for duplicates. That's my two cents. I have a totally different view of scanning. I don't. I don't know. This is the 21st century, and I just think we're being backwards here to not explore this. Trish, is there any place else in the any city in the in the uh, state of Massachusetts that is doing scanning, relies on scanning? So to answer your question, Steve, I mean, plenty of larger communities, you know, d there's lots of software out there. One of them's board docs, where everything is in electronic form and it's immediately you know, after the meeting and the minutes are accepted, it goes into an archived thing and immediately gets archived on the website. It's a public record and then it goes into a digital form and stuff like that. But I think folks need to consider that you don't have the bandwidth or the staffing or the ability to train folks to do that as a regular part of their job to consistently do that, to be able to create that kind of record. Is it in the realm of possibility in a few years? probably because it'll either be mandated or just makes sense because that will become the norm. But for a community like us, what we're talking about right now is sort of creating a storage facility for what we have right now. And what you have is a mess and not really safeguarded if you should have a fire or anything like that. I mean, not yeah, fi firing and sure and not everybody's even sure where the combination is to the vault right now and who has it and with tom leaving that's oh, something to be on somebody's priority list oh, dear. Um, well fire and, oh, and I think, farmer so, are something i know about and you know there are right. ways to protect right on fire so, we've never so, had a loss of anything so, I think, you know, you know, absolutely there are communities that do that, but they're larger communities. They've made an investment in training staff and buying software to do that. But, you know, we're, we're not there yet. I mean, you know, I think it's in the future, but right not now. If, 
I, I almost think I don't I don't know to fight this too much, but now, uh, if you selected the ones that are critical documents that you need to save and start saving them, and then go from there, and then you back into other stuff, I got one person with a scanner that costs thirty five hundred dollars. It's done all of our work, all these years. I just it's not as expensive as you guys are making it out to be. I don't believe that, and it's backed up. We got a big cybersecurity policy on everything we do. And that didn't take long. Brian Cook, I don't know if Roy, you know Brian and his firm, Com Comp Computing. They do they do oh, stuff yeah. for yeah. municipalities. They do it for yeah. uh, Leverett and so forth. And I just don't know. But well, it just seems so, like ways to keep pitching in on going after no, storing Steve, files. Steve, I think we're talking about, look, this is part of the larger discussion. Probably the first hundred or 150 years, or maybe even 200 years of the town's history, the uh, paper record uh, definitely presents a historical record that folks would want to see, many folks would want to see it uh, down the road or even in its original form as much as it's possible. Some of the stuff disintegrates and you can't, and that's a great argument you know, for scanning whatever you can. Uh, but then you take maybe the last 50 years of history, and I would say that, and I would say, uh, you, we probably got as much, and this is just off the seat of my pants, but I'll bet you there's as much physical stuff in the past 50 years as there was in the, in the past 200 years. So, you know, I think the problem could be broken down uh, in that regard. Um, but in, in terms of um, many of the depart departments, um, already have many documents electronic and they are stored on our servers and they are backed up off, off site into um, actually at the moment they're backed up into the Amazon cloud. Um, right. And so, um, you know, is that a good enough thing? And not all of the things, certainly paper, paper applications uh, uh, that people submit or whatever. I, I don't know what, what happens with with them, but anything that needs to be shared with other uh, other folks in the town government or town committees uh, typically becomes electronic and is electronic at this point in time. So my suspicion is that there are lots of the stuff that uh, Lee want, wants to make room for and for everybody else. It's probably already more or less in there. Um, and you know, Tom, you could correct me if I'm if I'm mistaken. So anyway, um, I certainly think it, it's, it's, it, the whole, the whole issue should be looked at, but, um, you know, Steve, with respect to the town versus, uh, your insurance company, you know, you, 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 there's a, there's a difference. There is a difference in how we have to handle these documents. And, and yeah, I don't want to go into discussion now, but I am, I, I will okay. probably do something I regret now and volunteer for such a committed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm wondering who's uh, going to do it. Huh? Who's going to do it? I don't know if we could do that before town meeting, but because uh, this, I, I know there's going to get pushback. I bet there's going to get pushback at town meeting on on twenty thousand dollars. Why yeah. you spend it during COVID? Come on. What's going well, on? I, I, just, I, I think there's if a you're lot. You're not doing something in the electronic space, at least. Uh, some part of what we do, start to make a transition forever. Are we going to be non electric, Bob? No, my Are hope is not electric. Scanning. You and I you believe know, electric. Seven vehicle. years from now, a lot of documents that we probably are keeping, we can get rid of. Yeah, exactly. And so I think a discussion will be there. Yeah. I have a suggestion that is, you know, are we going to have a, uh, a free town meeting this year? In the years past, we have. This uh, might be good to um, bring this up at a free town meeting so we don't burn the midnight away discussing I think this we didn't do it meeting. last year. Maybe we could have a pre town meeting Zoom meeting. And bring up something like this, which I think will be subject to a great discussion at town meeting with everyone offering their own opinions and theories. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mary McClintock used to always organize that, didn't she? Yeah. I I'd... wonder whether she'd be, because she's so great at organizing things. She and Jimmy did it every year. 
Yeah, I, 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 I can reach out to her and see if she'd do like a pre, pre-town meeting Zoom. I think that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. The, the use of the cafeteria is, I, I don't know whether that will be Board of Health approved. That's, you know, you gotta. Well, Zoom, distance. she said Zoom. Yeah, I know. I was, I was just thinking we could just do like a, you know, Zoom cocktail hour. You know. Mary runs some great Zoom meetings for the, you know, the planning board. Yeah. yeah, so. You've trained I'll, her well. I'll ask yet. her about that. Great. Can I offer one comment? Mary is not running for the planning board this year. She's been too busy with her uh, work environment. No, I know she's not. Yeah. So um, she may have time on her hands. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> she's got nothing better to do. The opposite, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. Okay, so th that's the show. So I just, I just pa posted the in the chat the records retention schedule for the from the Secretary of State's office. So you can take a Thank look. Thank you. You're reading pleasure. <laughs> How long is it? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't sleep that? tonight, if you can't sleep. Uh, okay. Tom, do you have any other updates about the, you know, you know, to go over with the finance committee while they're here? I wanted to know if there was any resolution from the capital improvements planning committee about uh, the paving item. I know there was talk about um, cutting it in half. I don't know if that had, was a formal recommendation from the committee or not. That was a formal recommendation, and Ron agreed to that. He would we would cut it down to about one hundred and seventy thousand. We would only do about one mile of the road, and uh, and our recommendation was that we borrow the money. Okay, great. Uh, so is that about one hundred and seventy thousand or one hundred and seventy thousand? One hundred and seventy thousand is what Ron said. Okay, great. Thank you. So should we switch to old business? Is that the end of the finance, joint finance meeting? Fine by me. Thank you. Oh, I, I did have one item under uh, money articles. Uh, the, the item is that uh, the Tyler bill from a past year, it, it's not Tyler Equipment Corporation, so it's not a highway issue. It is uh, an assessor's bill for the GIS system that uh, that they run. So uh, I had misspoken earlier, and that's actually an assessor's item um, for a bill for a prior year. And and that's all I have for the for the money articles. Great. So that'll be corrected on a new version. Could could we get that? Uh, it didn't specify, so it it stands as it is. <laughs> okay. I, I'd forgotten we did business with two Tylers. So we switched to old business. We have a couple of town meeting yeah. issues. One was, did, did, you want to, did you have changes that you want to talk about for the town meeting warrant? Uh, there's just one change, and that will be covered under new business. Okay. Um, and then the other was last week we talked about setting a date for the town meeting. Are you guys prepared to talk about it? Tom sent out a note that I think the dates were, was it uh, one in early June, mid June, and later in June? I forget the exact dates. That, I hate to say what they are because I'll probably be wrong. So there's well, the first, second, or third Monday. Sure. And there's some advantage you all feel to us having our town meeting before the other towns. Totally new to this process. So Only psychological. Guess. Okay, right. <laughs> uh, so, but you know, I don't think it, it makes a difference. Okay. So th th theoretically, the advantage is that. Um, we have greater leverage, uh, if you want to call it that, within this, the Frontier Budget Committee budget hearing room, because if if we're first uh, or second or third, then then 
potentially our vote is absolutely necessary to pass the vote that's passed the budget because it's Deerfield plus one or else the other three towns are, are needed to pass the school budget. So, um, but, but if that's not known at the time of the budget uh, being prepared, then it, we don't get the leverage from it. So if we do that, if we, just, if we make that change for this year, it's still a one-off thing. We're still sort of locked in right now by our, I think our bylaw maybe, I don't, I don't know, but we did change it to, to be the last of everybody. Um, so, um, you know, that, that, that was just my thing that, that we gave up when, when we always are reliably last and they know it, then, um, like, man, yeah. you know, ah, that guy from Conway, ah, yeah, yeah, we need, might humor him. We might humor him on this, but ah, who needs Conway? It's going to pass anyway. Yeah, so if, I, we I exaggerate. Choose that, if we choose that middle date, there's two towns going to have it on Saturday, then we would have it on Monday. And I think another, the last town has it on Tuesday and we'll have them all right together. Yeah, that, that might not be too fair to those that to those that have to go to all of them and have to really function at a high level at all of them. But um, in other words, uh, Phil. No, like the superintendent. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But but uh, you know, if that's the price we pay, then that's the price he pays. That's okay. But um, I I think it's better to you know get them have them be all packed together and yeah. get them all done. Has anyone asked Darius? Like, <laughs> does he have a preference? Yeah, I mean, if it, if it was up to him, I, I, he speaks about this. You know, he he, he would that the, the, those are serious things, and he's still got to be at school. You know, there's still yeah. the potential for there to be school during those days. And you're talking for you know whatever. Those are those are big deals that that require a lot of preparation. Each town has its own yeah you know thing. He's there for each grammar, he's, each elementary school, and each high school, and that's. That's a big ask. So, um, uh, you know, if, if it were him, he'd be like, please spread them out just a little bit if you can. But well, do was, you want to ask say, him, Phil, this week? And we'll talk oh, about he it would next say week. that in a much, he would say, you know, he, he'll equivocate, you know, he doesn't want to yeah, say, you know, say, you do what you have well, to do. Whatever works. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do what you have to do. It's your town meeting. You set your dates. I'll be fine. Da, da, da. But, uh, you know, I just, that's, that's not something that, um, you know, like like I said, that there's a lot that goes into preparation for it, and um, it's a big deal. So, to have so, four, to have three of them in three days, three of them in four days, ouch. So um, we can but, choose the first date, and we'd be first. And you, first Monday in June. Are we doing this without town administrator? In the first uh, I'm sure Tom is here. I'm not... He's here, isn't he? Still? Oh, are we doing it? Yes. I mean, will Tom with... be gone by then? Tom will be gone by then. Yeah, we will, yes. we will be living so. with our interim at that No point. matter when we have the town meeting, he'll be gone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which, which leads into the next agenda item, right? Um, okay. which actually has a, has a finance committee component to it as well, um, if we're looking for a representative from the finance committee. So... Maybe you want to go into that, Bob. Okay. Well, so the, yeah. So the next agenda item was um, to appoint a preliminary screening committee to begin looking at candidates, and and hopefully today we might even be able to approve the language. Tom sent out some language as a as a proposal for a, the uh, ad we would put out. We put that out, and hopefully we'll get some candidates and a preliminary screening committee to meet with them, to look, to look at their resumes and see if who, who there we want to talk to. So right now, we, uh, Jan has said she'd, she'd love to do it, and Lori and uh, uh, Lee, and then perhaps somebody from the select board and somebody from the finance committee. They'd be yeah, willing to serve on the committee, or? Th they would be on this. Uh, oh, review committee to review okay. the uh, the uh, resumes of people that say they're interested in our interim position. Okay. I, I would say that it should be a majority elected official elected and not uh, that that I'm sensitive to the issue that is raised by people of employees picking their supervisor. Um, 
Mm-hmm. So, so this, you know, f- th- just th- three sounds like a lot. Three sounds like it's going to be three employees. Sounds like it's going to be a majority of the committee, or close to it. So I don't, I don't really know. But volunteer, the volunteer. It, it, it was only two, Alan. It was only two, Alan. Lee is an elected official. Oh, that's true. All right. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm fully willing to serve, but I also, being the, you know, the freshman here. That'd be great, <laughs> okay. though. No, no, no. I'm, I'm happy to cede to you all who have far more experience in this role. But I mean, Look, I, I'll it, volunteer. I support it completely. Okay. One another newbie, I'm willing to serve and, as well. So, so Tom, did you hear that, Steve and Erica? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Jan, Lori, and Lee. So, so that, th- that doesn't get us a date for town meeting, but it's- no, yeah, I was going to say, can we go back to that? So you were saying <laughs> yeah. the first Saturday in June, so that would be like June 5th? First Monday. First Monday. Okay. So June 7th. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought that was, um, that's what I heard. Heard what? No, that's what I heard. I, I, I heard June 7th. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't sure that we had actually decided that, but that's... We hadn't. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. So, Phil, you'd be more comfortable with an early date, though, so the Conway has more... more. Uh... No, it doesn't matter. No, it, like, like I said, that the lever... The, the, it's not... It doesn't matter for this year that the frontier budget is very kind for Conway there. People are going to jump up and give a standing ovation. Um, Good, so. So what's um, going to be most palatable to Darius? Yeah. That, that yeah. If, if, if he was pressed in, in, in private, he would say, you know, a, a, a few days break between them would be great. Uh, it's the seventh. Do you think that's going to work or not? Six days before the next one. So yeah, I think, yeah. So all right. Yeah, I, I don't want to make too big of a deal of it. I think he's he'll be fine no matter what we decide. But if if we are if if it is about him, it would be polite to spread it out. But, so okay. um, I think deciding that earlier, you know, deciding as soon as possible is good, so people will know. So so we're we're good with the seventh June seventh. That sounds good to me. I'll make a motion. We hold town meeting on June seventh. I will second that. I'll say aye. So, but the, the only thing, Bob, was that, you know, that the, was, is, is it really best to go back to Monday? And, you know, the Saturday thing worked well. We can do Saturday in the gym. I, I don't know. <laughs> we, like, my, I think, I think Monday just does not work well. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, Saturday and it, started in midday. Like, yeah. Like yeah. And, and, you know, the, and, and that's just because, you know, look, we know that there's like, but uh, bylaws coming up at the end. So, um, and, and and we know that those are thick, juicy bylaws. You know, not 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 summer reading, not easy beach reading, Joe. Um, Don't so, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would be fine with that as well. I mean, we're not doing it. We can't do it in the town garage, right? It's going to be at the grammar school. That's right. So, I mean, I Saturday. I always would prefer a Saturday. I think for. Okay. Most people would. Yeah. Okay. Most people would. And, and we, you know, as a town, we have this long history of making all of our bad decisions at 11 o'clock on Monday because everybody wants to go home. <laughs> Stuff gets rushed. We want to finish. It's just, it, we, I just have, there's lots of collective bad we'll memories. Like preface town meeting with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not there's a Monday lot. night. So we're making good decisions, people. We're right, going to be setting a precedent. It'll be hard to move it off a of Saturday. If we I think that's two, for the best. In a row. I, think be. I think that's for, I do think that's for the best. And then maybe we'll start scanning documents too. <laughs> it's be a right after meeting. the meeting. <laughs> So, okay. Bill, you're going to propose a, a bylaw that it be the, the first Saturday in June? Yeah, that's a great idea. So so proposed. <laughs> I, I would propose that we have it on the, then let's say, the first Saturday in June this year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Let's see how it goes. Are you shaking your head yes? 
I think Erica, I heard a second. So I'm yeah, Let's, yeah. I, I heard that. So, Saturday the fifth sounds good to me. Saturday the fifth. Okay. Uh, what time is going to be? What time did we have it last year? It's like at noon or something. Didn't it start at noon? Uh, it was probably twelve thirty or one. I let me uh let me just check. Yeah, it was one o'clock. Okay. Uh, okay. But people were advised to show up as early as noon, just so that it wasn't a crowded entrance for everyone. Mm, okay. Okay. Sounds good. This is, this is great. I like that idea. Thank you all. Thank you all. <clears throat> uh, Tom also sent out a note looking at various processes for choosing an interim. Uh, and so if we're off to a... So, so to start with, let's talk about the, the language. And I know that, I, you know, did you all get a chance to read the, uh, the ad that, that Tom proposed? Well, is that the um, the job description? No, it was a, about a two paragraph, uh, you know, an, an, an ad, you know, seeking an experienced interim town administrator to serve until a permanent replacement is hired, blah, blah, blah. It went on from there. I think I saw that. I don't, I, don't I thought know. it got sent out to everyone. I, didn't, I just, I saw the job description. Tom, could you put it uh, up? No, this. Oh yeah, here sure. it is. Okay, I see it. It was with the agenda. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's what I thought was the job description. Okay, I did see that. Sorry. Oh, he had a job description that was like three or four pages. Okay, well, then I didn't see that. <laughs> I just saw oh, that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, to some extent, this is sort of a quick overview of, of the job description for the interim. Right. Or, you know. So the, you know, the the, the my my, my I, I, the only thing that I'd like to just put up there is that, um, you know, we may want the interim to be longer than three months. Um, that that I'd like to just leave that open to that possibility open, just be, because there are some. Although you want that you intend for them to be interim, they have potential enough value to add that you'd want them to go through like an entire budget cycle with your town. Um, so that like an interim could potentially be a year or so. If, if, if like, cause there, there are some like re really good ones that are interims oh. that don't want it, but do, do you see what I'm saying, Bob? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um so, so the, the part that says up last up to three months, maybe. Um, yeah is expected to last until a permanent hire is made. Um, yeah, I would say having been on like several hiring committees over the past couple of years, I appreciate how important it is in the job description <laughs> to make it clear. Um, like if we're willing to have someone be in board or be on board for, you know, up to six months, like, or for however long it takes, like we should be very explicit about that because um, yeah, there may be people who, you know, they don't want a three month position. Um, you know, they want to possibly be considered for a permanent hire. Uh, well, I don't think that this, I think actually, I think this says you would be considered for the permanent, it says yeah. the interim may apply for the permanent position. So yeah, no, I just, but I, 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 I want to agree with Phil that like to put a date on to say like, you know, three months. Um, I think it's, it, I would prefer to leave it open. Yeah, because I think that that makes it more attractive to applicants. So Tom just changed. So are you guys? Work. Go ahead. Yeah. Are you seeing that? Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, I think that looks good. And, and the reason why I think it would be good to get this right out right away is that there's a number of good people and we talked, you know, we all said yes, there's some good people out there. Um, They'll be looking. They're liable to take a job before we can get get this out, get this done. So, 
Yeah, I'll get this right out. I, I expect to get um, at least one resume pretty quickly. Uh, I know there's somebody who's interested in the permanent position uh, who might not be interested in the interim position, uh, maybe even two people. So um, there, there is some interest already out there. And, and I'll, I'll make sure to send it to the to the four names that I uh, that I uh, gave you earlier. Yeah, please do. Good. For Tom, for the committee that we formed, that's going to review the the, re, the uh, resumes. Is is that a committee yeah. that has to follow uh, Robert's rules of order and the, all that? It, they're it's a regular town committee. The regular yeah. Town. Oh, yeah. yeah. They got to open their meeting yeah. and go uh, into executive session by roll call every time and do all that. Okay. Keep minutes. Yep. yep. Because if we get a number of candidates soon, you know, we will have, you know, once we have a, a few candidates, we'll have to start having some interviews. Sorry, I. I have myself on mute. Is there anything in the advertisement that says anything about what a comparable range of salary might be? You want to put that in? They all know that already. Huh? All the applicants know that already. Well, they know what the past had been, but they don't necessarily know what the future would be. Yeah, I don't think we have anything in there today about salary. No, I don't. You don't. Yeah, not what not what Tom put up on there. What would you propose? I have no idea. <laughs> so I, I do know that in in other um, in, in in with in the school context, we never put the 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 amount the salary amount the compensation amount in the initial uh, advertisement. We always, uh, you know, that that's that's the second c communication with perspective with prospective applicants. Um, I, I don't know. I think we might all be better off that way too. You might you might get more people that way if you don't tell them right away what it is. But well, you usually you say something like salary will be commensurate with uh, experience and yeah. yeah. If, if we don't tell them, we might have a chance, you know, just to charm them with our magnetic personalities and not have to pay top dollar. No, there's no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, the other thing is, um, because it took a while to replace Lisa, we do have money um, available that could be used to overlap. And I would strongly suggest at least two weeks and probably three weeks of overlap with me so that that person can, can really know how everything is done in this office. Probably a good idea. Yeah, I agree. So you want to say April 1st or something like that in the March? You mean to have have somebody hired? Yes. Well, the, yeah, the, this says April 12th, which would be um, that that actually would not allow for overlap. Um, what if I said something like on or about April 1st? Yeah. So Steve proposed we put something in there about salary, and a lot of people didn't. Well, your comment like about that. commensurate yeah. with experience is appropriate. Yeah. You want to attract people who got experience. You don't want a newbie running in there. Well, especially if, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. 
So everybody like this? I'm going to make a motion that we that, that, that Tom sends this out as soon as possible. Like, I imagine it could be tomorrow. I think it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> good. We had a couple items under new business in the in, in, in the agenda left. Uh, one was re a request for town meeting warrant article regarding the South River Conservation. Joe, is that what you're here for? Yes, it is. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> and and I related matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought you were just en enjoying it. Oh, of course, immensely, right? Yeah. It brings back fond memories. <laughs> sure. Am I next? Yeah, you're not. You're on. Okay. Um, I don't know if the whole board is familiar with the work that's going on in the South River. Do I need to explain any of that? I'm familiar. You're not familiar? You are. No, I am. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I know Phil is and Bob is. Yeah, okay. Um, the one piece of news that Phil gave us is that the uh, Evans property on 69 Main Street is back on the market and we can submit a bid, I guess the second bid. Uh, we did do one at, I believe, 70,000. Um, I talked with Tom Hutchinson and there's $104,000 available for land acquisition. Uh, 82,000, I think, from the sale of the original grammar school and 20 something from uh, forest cutting that have to be spent on land-like projects. So what we're asking is if we can have a warrant article to use that money for restoration work on the South River. Uh, the intent would be to go back to Evans with a slightly higher offer. And there's two other parcels that have come up uh, as parcels of interest for the project. They're along Shelburne Falls Road, uh, approximately where Emerson Hollow comes out onto Shelburne Falls. There are two tiny strips along the riverbank, uh, partly going um, proposed to be restored. Um, one of them is the site where the fire department fills up the uh, fire trucks to service the center of town. And it, it appears to my knowledge that we have no easement um, or anything like that. And the town has been using that Ford and, and filling the fire trucks there for years. So that one bothers me a little bit. It might even I hate to say it, be an eminent domain thing at some point, but is, who owns that, Joe? Uh, it turns out that we just found out last week that it's owned by Mary uh, Bay, um, Dr. Bay's Dr. Bay. I guess it's Mary Bay, Dr. Bay's daughter. Uh, Dr. Bay used to live up on Baptist Hill. It's just a narrow strip, uh, and then just above it is another parcel owned by Judith Waldo. We've been talking with both of them. Um, and so we're, we're thinking that they're probably going to be parcels of low value. In our meeting with Lee, she gave us a price of 9000 and change for one of the parcels and 10 to 14 for the other parcel. And then the, um, we believe that Evan's assessed value will be around 82000 So the 100000 would go a long ways. Tom Hutchinson and I... Yeah. Interpretation of the state law. Um, it's, it was my impression, and I know we used it when we tried to buy other property in town, that we're only allowed to buy property for as high as 125% of the assessed value. Uh, I think Tom has asked town council to rule on that. But, um, so we're looking for this article. Um, we can we can tune it up a little bit before town meeting. If we move, if we get further along with Evans or either of these other two parcels, but in total, it's about a hundred thousand dollars at assessed value uh, that we would be needing to fund these projects. Those would all go under the same article, so it's not like we could choose we're going to buy this piece of land or this piece of land. It's all three together under the oh, same article. I mean, right now we're asking for the article to be generic. It okay. could be we would buy two and not the third, or you know, 
it's a pot of money towards the project. Um, Kimberly, who's running the program or the grant program, is working with the Franklin Land Trust to see if they'll chip in some money. And I believe Janet is going to approach the CPA about possibly getting some money from CPA. But the 100000 it seems like a good use for the money. It's all that's been sitting there since 1990, early 90s, I guess. Um, is there any question on, on any of that part of it? I'm just wondering, you know, what Evans would need. Well, well, the other thing we're going to request that you consider tonight is uh, to authorize FERCOG to secure for us from the existing grant money, uh, legal opinions and analysis on these, on these properties and acquisitions, title search, and appraisals. Um, these are all items that Lee Wickham agreed, and actually the land trust will need also if they were gonna participate in any way uh, to have this professional uh, work done. And so uh, oh. yeah. well, that, and then we would know a whole lot more. In, in anticipation of you approving the, the hundred thousand, Kimberly has ten thousand left in the grant program, and whether we sell for assessed value or appraisals, we, this will allow us to get the appraisals, get the title searches done, get legal opinions. So we would be then ready to purchase any or all parcels, um, providing we had the any additional funding we might need. And then, of course, the appraisal would give you a much better idea and better negotiating and and uh, so forth. Joe, yeah, where'd you get the 82,000? Um, that was Lee's um, opinion, if you will, as to what the Evans property is worth as a four acre legal building lot. It turns out it's been assessed fairly close because they had the um, part on Main Street assessed as a building lot. And then they had the, the parcel on the other side assessed eight or 9,000, but the total was in the 70s. So we're not that far off. But um, if in fact the law that we're referring to is applicable, the other wrinkle is it says it's supposed to be the average of the last three years assessment. Unfortunately, the one of the parcels is brand new because we didn't know it existed. And Evan's property has been um, I guess assessed as a building lot, but um, not as a legal building lot, I guess to sort of as a grandfather lot, but it, I, we don't expect that value would change a lot. But the, the prior assessment of Evans, I think is like 78,000, if I'm remembering my numbers correctly, or maybe it's 70,000, somewhere in that area. What it was when there was a, when there was a structure on it, when there was the home on it? No, when it has, well, the foundation and the, it has a foundation and a um, one bedroom septic system. Lee's feeling is that the septic system is of no value. It's probably going to have to be replaced. Uh, it's sat unused for so long. So I, I don't know how we're going to deal, if in fact the law does apply, I don't know how we're going to deal with the last three years of average assessment. One of the parcels didn't exist, so it's, assessed value for the last three years is zero. But so the, the, uh, the legal analysis as part of this will shed a lot of light on that and give, us a, give us a workaround. 125% of 82, that comes out to about 102 or 103. Right. And, and that's very different than what he's asking for. Yeah, right. what, what, what did you think he was going to get from a private seller? 169 is his asking price. Yeah. We, we think that's unreasonable, but we don't have an assess, uh, an appraisal. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we'd like to proceed with the appraisal. And Kimberly's willing to do that with the grant money. So we would be prepared to do either assess value or appraise value, depending on what our town council advises to do, you know. 
and you might get another legal opinion from this. Right. Well, I would love to have us buy that buy that property and use it to protect the town from the river. But right, that's really important. I think it's a big ask. It's a big ask of town. I'm I'm trying to like wrap my hand around what what the number what the number is that we're asking the town to come up with. Um, but well, you know, I, I, right now we're asking for the hundred. There may be some from CPA. We're hoping the land trust will participate. They've been known to do projects like this, preserving land along the riverbank, you know, buying up parcels. I don't think I don't think the land trust is going to come up with any of their own money for this. They don't they don't like to buy things. No, I mean it, they would help us finance it, and then they would recover yes. their money other ways for donations or something like. But, but Joe, you're talking about a, about a hundred dollars for a hundred thousand for the Evans property, and twenty five thousand more for the drafting area. If we, if we have to buy them, um, Judith Waldo is asked if we would be interested in buying it. Um, I guess the other wrinkle here is both parties that own the land. It's a, it's more of a sentimental value, I think is the way it was described. Um, Judy spent her part of her childhood here in a cabin that existed along the river. The cabin was taken down in 1990. She still, in some ways, I think, thinks she has a building lot, but she, we don't believe that she does. We don't think either one of them are buildable along the river in, the, in that section. Um, we, uh, we, we, we tossed around offering them some historic recognition, perhaps. Yeah, maybe a bench, a a bench. plaques. <laughs> and and other, uh, other folks noted it is a place where people like to go and, you know, sit and then they could learn the history, which Phil can write for us. <laughs> hey, Joe, so, do you think this is an appropriate time to talk about what's going to happen at that location, what, what, what the long-term plans are? I, we can, we I mean, can, sure. That's what I, I don't know if Erica and Phil know the broader plan there. Oh, I know the, the one place that we're talking about is where the uh, fire trucks fill up, which is what my kids call dog hole or <laughs> the rock score. <laughs> they have a couple that's different right. names for it. Yeah. Um, what's and, and the other location is also along the South River, but where exactly? It's right next to it. Those okay. two. Those two are, are right next to it. Each other. Okay. And, land, and the other one is in the center of town. Um, I guess. Do you, have, do you have to buy it? Is there any talk about just buying a, an environmental easement or whatever? Uh, or? I mean, th these are all options. I, yeah. I guess the urgency is town meetings coming, and it would be nice to have this money earmarked, a two thirds vote, so that there's support from the town to proceed with this. It's going to be awkward to negotiate with Evans with no money. You know, if we have a hundred thousand and he knows that, if he's listened to town meeting, he can make yeah. a decision whether he wants yeah. to accept it or make a donation to the town. Um, we, with, um, I'm jumping around a lot with um, Mary Bay. Um, maybe she would give us an easement. We need, we really should secure something for the yeah. uh, fire department. Yeah, we need to secure something. Joe, isn't this the spot where the proposal is to rebuild the crossing? Joe, isn't this? Uh, no, yes, it actually, is. Actually, on, uh, on Mary's parcel, we plan to put in a dry hydrant for the fire department and dig a deep hole in the river. And the other part of it is there's an old oxbow in that area. So the plan was to open up the oxbow, which would actually make where we drive currently drive in with the fire trucks, there wouldn't be any water there. Oh. It would actually go out uh, and around in the oxbow and come back into the river further downstream. But in that area, we would put in a dry hydrant uh, for for Bob to fill the fire trucks with. And and it would make the crossing to the farm fields, which are you know important and used. Um, they would use that new. Right. crossing yeah. also and would be better for the river because hopefully that would be dry uh the upstream crossing is so 
eroded that that really is a, a, a terrible problem now. So, so from the standpoint of the project, we would plan to not work on the downstream one, which is on Sigular's property. Basically, we would abandon that crossing. So the current upstream crossing at Mary's parcel would become a dry crossing. And then we would make a new Ford from the Oxbow into Sigular's property. <laughs> it's really complicated. <laughs> You know, we can, you know, certainly you could sit, con consider easements also. My, my view is that these parcels are both so small, um, you know, it's, uh, it, they only have this value. Um, the cost of the easement, you know, might not be much more than the cost of these little uh, odd unbuildable parcels. So. Um, you know, I think these both these owners are kind of up in age and and um, it just seems like a longer term better solution resolution. It gives actually it, um, the most flexibility in the future. You know, the river still may move some and it may need a little tweaking and you're going to have to have, you know, future pe people go back and do more types of searches for for, you know, this little bit of land where somebody needs, we need to do improvements in the future. So I guess an ideal situation would be that the, the two parcels down on Shelvin Falls Road, we would get for nothing. And then we could use the 100,000 to work with Evans. But it's too early in the game to know how this will all play out, actually. Well, the, the one thing that, you know, um, Joe, you know, just, um, I don't just from my conversation. I, I don't see Evans coming down. I, uh, the, 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 like the, the amount that we're talking about purchasing for, I don't. I, I don't see him uh, uh, saying yes to that. Even in even if it just even if it was just a cash transfer, I don't see him yet saying yes to that. Let let alone yes and then wait wait a few months and then you know wait on a two thirds vote. So I. Like, I, I, you know, maybe it might be time for someone else to call the guy besides me and get a second opinion on what the guy says. I, I mean, I, I don't know, but he is open to talking to anybody. Well, once you get an appraisal, then we'll be or somebody else will be in a much better position. And I don't see why we couldn't ask for this with the goal being the two thirds vote at town meeting. And then, you know, then maybe he won't accept it, but. We would have we would have it then and you know have yeah. it on the table. My thinking is it's an opportune time to ask the town to commit the money. If we don't use it, we'll turn it back in. And, you know, if Evans sells it before we get there. But as you know, one of his complaints before was he didn't want to wait for the town to make a decision. If we let it go past town meeting and then he agrees to something, and then we have to go back to town meeting in July, August, or September and it's going to be another hurdle, you know. If we have a hundred thousand in the bank and we and we can make a deal, um, so be it. If we can't, then we'll find out how short we are. You know, maybe he'll come to one twenty-five or something. You know? I think the best position to be in is to have a hundred thousand dollars in your pocket before you go and talk to him. See how far he'll come down. What's the chance of CPA money? Well, there's a good chance you've uh, if we put something in a request um, fairly soon, especially with the delayed town meeting, you know, the CPA, the request has to be drawn up, which doesn't take very much and then presented to CPA and then hopefully they can find somebody or enough members to call a meeting and consider it. So, so it, it's doable. <laughs> If that were to happen, I would say that that increases the chance of town meeting success significantly. Well, it's certainly do so. it's certainly doable. You know, and one question is like how much. Um, you, know, you know, I was listening to something you said, Phil. You said something like, "If we had twenty-two thousand dollars for racks, that's what we buy." Well, if we if we approve one hundred sixty-nine thousand, there's no way Evans will come down. Right. If we approve one hundred and a quarter, there's a chance he might. <laughs> 
that's my philosophy on negotiations, I guess. <laughs> So, you know, so, 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 how much are you proposing that that the town uh, uh, just just to try to get it? So the so, so I, I just the, the, for to get us in a position then to be at town meeting and to ask for that and then to be right away say have our ducks all lined up. What 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 is the? So what you're is talking the cost? about a hundred thousand from the the money the. Right. Tom already wrote up the article based on the, but I think it's 104,000. That would be a part of it. And then if we can get the uh, appraisals done, we'll know mo better what we need for the rest of it. Which would, I would assume we would ask for from CPA money or the, the 104,000 is not from the town. That's, that's, that's money that we have it's, in an it's account. Not, it's money we have. It won't go on the tax rate. Yeah. Just sitting there waiting so, for a project. So it's from the town, but it's not from the assessments. Yeah. It, it, right. won't, it won't show up on the tax rate. Right. And, and you can say the same thing for the CPA, you know. It's, yes. It's, okay. So so the question is, I think we should we should come up with a number now so we can write the CPA request and then whittle it down or if need be. I'm hearing twenty-five thousand for the Evans and twenty-five thousand for the two strips. How much? Okay. <laughs> for the two strips? You said the two strips are one is nine and one is fourteen. Twenty. Yeah, right? I think. Yep. Twenty-five plus a hundred is hundred. We don't have hundred twenty-five in that account, so. So, no, so we only have a hundred. But if we took twenty-five thousand of CPA money toward the Evans property and twenty-five thousand more for the two strips. There we go. So, so fifty thousand. And 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 Joe will uh, request it from Malcolm. If if you uh, you know endorse that also. I I guess if you want to take a bite at the whole apple, it'd be something like that. Yeah. But it, it's uh, possible that Mary uh, would decide to give the land to us. We don't know. You know, maybe or maybe we just decide to buy the easement, which might be cheaper. You know? We could amend that at town meeting if we well, it'd be a maximum, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. But I like 125,000 a lot more for the Evans property than than 100. I don't, you know, I I don't know what I don't I don't know what the number is that he would say yes at. I do I know, know that he's he's real keen on his number right now. I do know that. Um, but you know, like I said, I don't. I, I wasn't negotiating. I was just listening and taking notes. Um, yeah. And, well, and uh, at this point, we he doesn't know if it's a buildable lot. I don't know if he's going to yeah, be. He does. Well, lot. he thinks. Yeah, he thinks it is. He, I mean, he he's, thinks it is, but he hasn't gone through the process. We're not going to use it as a buildable lot. Yeah. But we're we're making him an offer, you know, based on our best use of the property. Which is not going to include a house, so I think that's a it's a fair approach. If he well, doesn't like it, then I agree. Yeah, you know, and the but the, the appraisal the appraisal know. may show that it really isn't buildable. You know, it's unknown if what the concom would do to have to uh, uh, approve it. You know, if it's too close to the river and so forth. So, I mean, I think jo Joe's analysis is spot on in terms of get the money sort of in the bank, get it approved, you know, and we'll get the appraisals and and it's early June and uh, hopefully he won't have another offer by then. Joe, do you have a warrant article to show us? Um, Tom drew one up. Yes. Yeah, I did see one. Is Tom still with us? Tom, can you bring it up on the screen? Yeah, just one second. It's Article 21 in the warrant you should have. I didn't print the warrant out. I can read you the wording. I, I, I have too many computers at this point. So. Tom did come up with some basic wording. Yes. The city of town will appropriate the remainder of the Crooked Hill Road Special Revenue Fund, approximately $20,450, and the remainder of the sale of real estate, Chapter 44, Section 63, approximately $84,695, to 
for purchasing 69 Main Street and or other properties along the South River for conservation purposes. And we can add to support the MVP grant if that helps. We, we might want to throw the flood thing in there somewhere. Yeah. Well, I like, you know, I, I like I like throwing the, the, the wording in the article itself that that, uh, you know, this will not affect the tax something like that. Just that just to the the, the that from existing is, funds. Is, yeah. Yeah. That this is about releasing existing funds and right. not uh, uh, requesting new funds that that's that should be really clear from the first glimpse of it. Right. Well, this only appropriates two existing funds. Well, but but he's saying that you want to just take the take the sting out. Um, yeah. Change uh, the word appropriate to release. I think you have to. Don't you have to appropriate it, Tom? Appropriate would be the proper word. I can you transfer it? Does that? We would transfer it to the general fund, and I could put that in there. Yeah. Yeah. But if we say that we're transferring it to the general fund, does that? That's, that yeah, that's. Is that that's helpful? helpful. Well, I don't. I think it has to be appropriated for land acquisition. For, but, yeah, I mean, like if it just goes to the general fund, then it, it, right. is it earmarked for. for that's where we would, that is technically where it would be appropriated to. Okay. And we spend okay. from that for the purpose of the warrant article. Okay. I mean, yours says for conservation purposes, which is in the keeping and not Right. And that's how we get the Cricket Hill Road money. Right. If well, it's I, not for conservation well, purposes, we can't use that money. Well, con at flood remediation is a form of conservation. I had proposed putting the flood remediation in there, and Tom didn't like it. As Phil, are you okay with Tom's revised wording? So he's going to transfer the money uh, and and then appropriate it from the general fund. Yeah, is it is it completely inappropriate just to have a declarative statement in there saying this this art, uh, approval of this article will not affect the tax rate? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Right. That, 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 that should be in the presentation. I understand that. Why why could, why couldn't you put something in in parentheses? We certainly are in a position to explain it at town yeah. meeting. Yep. But I, I don't I, think I don't think we've ever done this before, Phil. It's usually obvious to the audience. I, I, I get that. You know, the, the, the just from just from the um you know it it when people read that at home when they're looking at it the first time, they never ever get upset about it. What um if, if it has that like uh, that that just like real like this will not affect your People do not get upset about it. If they read it and it's not clear to them from reading it that it doesn't affect their tax rate, then they get upset about it. Then you have to calm them down at town meeting and reason with them and attempt well, to persuade them. Shouldn't so, every article, like, we should just check a box that says, like, will affect your tax rate? Will not well, that's the thing. If it's, if it's mean, in the like, warrant, if it's in the warrant, there's there's a, an assumption that it does affect your taxes. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about it. No, I mean, um, when you so when you transfer from stabilization, I think yeah. I think you're right. I do. I, you know, it's 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 an improvement. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. For the last two years, none of the money articles have affected the tax rate, and I've made a big deal about that in the budget. This year, there is an appropriation, a proposed appropriation, just one. And we'll kick that around later when we talk about the the money articles with the finance committee um, for approval. And when this warrant article says for purchasing 69 Main Street, that's got teeth in it, right? I mean, I mean that means you know the money can't be spent on something else. Right. I, I have no problem with tightening it up so it only goes to South River. As a matter of fact, I would encourage it, but. 
whether it's whether, you know whether you say it's for for supporting the MVP grant or however you want to tighten it up. Tom does have along the South River, so at least yeah. we've constrained it to the South River, which which is up pro, is up fine with me too. Hopefully by town meeting we'll know what their situation is with the other two parcels. Um, at this point, Lee apparently just discovered this in the last, let's say, year. So it it's actually incorrectly drawn on the assessor's map. So she's working on getting the map straightened out. So I mean, more information mm. will be forthcoming, hopefully before town meeting. Mm. So, you know, look, this this is forward movement. The the total of of one hundred and four thousand is forward movement. The CPA is forward movement. Um, so uh, you know, I think the the you 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 have advanced the ball. I, you know, tip of the hat. Um, so. Um, so yeah. what we need is uh, I don't know whether you need to vote or uh, Kimberly needs some assurance that you're supporting her expenditure of the grant funds. Yeah, she wants a she wants a vote on that. She had the she had the sort of had the motion had the language, which I can't see because my Zoom is full screen. But Joe, we haven't maybe... voted on any of these articles yet, though. Are are, are we voting on no, no. doing an appraisal? Yes. Okay. I think what happened is you must have signed a contract or something for yeah. the grant. Yeah. To do the appraisal, a legal analysis, and a title search. That from their let, existing. Let me, let me read you what you wrote. We request the select board's approval concurrence with FERCOG drafting a scope of work and hiring right professionals to help with title search, legal opinions for acquisition and appraisals for the three properties being considered for purchase by the town. I think she needs to take this to her boss or to the people that are running the grant. I think we're all in favor of that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's not something that we are just, that we're gonna pay for right now. That's no, no, but you want to, you know, they need to see that you're on board with it. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you want it. And so therefore, can't you just do like a motion and second and approve it? So, Jenna, is, is, so there, there's no doubt in your mind that this is the highest and best use of that grant money versus whatever was intended to spend that grant money. Well, that grant money, she, she had money in the grant for these purposes. Um, the other issue, uh, Phil, is the grant runs out on June 30th. So this this would be an appropriate use of the money uh, with your support. And if it goes beyond June, it gets turned back to the government. It's a use it or lose it type of thing. Yeah. So this is costing the town nothing basically to do this appraisal. Right. Okay, I, right. I move that we... <laughs> that we... So, so we, who, who's gonna state this motion now? I mean, Joe, do you wanna... Can, you want me to read it again? Can you record? turn what you read into a motion that sure. that uh, that will be in the minutes? Sure, I can do that. Um, I, I don't know which group. I'll, let me just read the way it is. <coughs> we we meaning the South River MVP grant delegation or whatever we're called request the select board's approval and concurrence with FERCOG drafting a scope of work and hiring right professionals to help with title search, legal opinions for acquisition and appraisals for the three properties being considered for purchase by the town. So I would move that the select board and then, you know, most of the rest of what you wrote, what you just said, you know, supports. So you move that we uh, approve what Joe just Yes. Actually, yeah. what I mean, you do is you I just say that. you just say so moved, and then Tom yeah. has to untangle the whole puzzle. Uh, it, well, I'm, I'm sure he can. And it won't be hard because we'll just forward. Tom's probably got the email already, and we'll, yeah. we'll just forward it yes. to him. And that's yes. what's your that's uh, the motion. You, yeah. You already have it, Tom. Uh, it was sent to you um, Monday this afternoon at four o'clock. You have the you have the same email I'm reading from. 
Uh, sorry, I was on mute. Yes, I do. It was sent to the select board of town of Conway. So, Tom, we, we would like to have a motion that the select board supports FERCOG spending mm -hmm. that money as it's described in that statement. Can you turn that into a motion? Yes. I second the motion. Mm -hmm. I thought we already made the motion. <laughs> and I'll vote aye, and Erica votes aye, and yeah. Phil. Yeah. Phil yeah. <laughs> votes aye. So I do think. I mean, we've all expressed support for, for. Right. Kimberly, doing this. Yes. We will tell her you were very enthusiastic. Uh, yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're we're off and running again then. I think that's all we needed for tonight. Thank you all. Good night. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Good night. Good night Janet. Have a good evening. Yeah. Ooh. So the, the next two items in our new business, I think we're gonna table. One had to do with appointing uh, preservation. Yeah, you know, looking oh yeah expressing a request that we need more people on the preservation committee. And I think that there are more people on the preservation committee that we just didn't have a good notice about. And appoint Amy Anderson to the community preservation committee. I think Amy has expressed that she would rather be on a different committee. And uh, <laughs> so we would just as soon not appoint her to the community preservation committee right now. And tell her we'll put her where she's needed most. I know. What, wait, which, what committee does she want to be on? Is Open that a space. Oh, okay. That's so, and, awesome. and Janet has somebody that wants to be on preservation committee. So, but all of this we're going to have to work out, you know, yeah, that's... next week or something. It's, I mean, Malcolm's got to be involved in this kind of decision. So, we, we, we should just table these appointments that we're oh, not going to. Yeah, we already did. But Jackie Choate was on a meeting earlier. Right. And so then the last yeah, one so... is appoint Jackie Choate. We yeah. did that one. So that's okay. done. So we're all that set. All done. right. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tom, items not anticipated in 48 hours. I don't have anything there. Nor I. No. Do you have a town administrator update? Yes, I do. Um, for committees and boards, last spring during the activity surrounding town meeting, I'm sorry to say that it appears we did not do all the usual annual appointments. Louise is working on sorting through that and we'll be sure to have a good list this coming June. I've written the Council on Aging and the Parks and Rec Committees regarding their delegates to the Community Preservation Committee. To avoid confusion in the future, it would be best if those committee's recommendations came to the select board for formal appointment. I've written to the Board of Health asking for their recommendation on postponing town meeting till June to minimize potential exposure to the virus. Since they meet the same night as the select board, we do not yet have a recommendation on that. Uh, however, I'm fairly sure that selecting a date in June will be fine, which we've already done. And finally, I'm sorry to report that Alexis Fedoryashenko, administrative assistant to the Con Conservation Commission and Planning Board, has submitted her resignation effective in two weeks. Wow. Oh, no. Dang. Yes. In was it something we and did? So we'll, I do. Um, um, so I'll, I'll be putting an ad together for that. She um, will be hard to replace. Especially for the planning. Uh, She's been unbelievable. In departmental news, uh, EMD George Murphy, Assistant EMD Veronica Blanchard, and I are working to fix a problem for people signing up for the reverse 911 system. Apparently, the problem is on the Blackboard end, the company we use that runs the system. Mm. And finally, I will have for you next week an approval form 
for a dry hydrant installation proposed by a resident. This will be a new process for Conway, but I think a good one for recording where dry hydrants are and when they were approved. So that is it for my report. Any select board comments or concerns? Any mail? Uh, we did, uh, the select board did get a piece of mail about housing. I will scan that and send it out to you. Okay. It's uh, it's for a uh, a virtual series on increasing access to affordable housing in Franklin County, starting on March 27th. Then there are eight virtual workshops in April and May that will dive deeper into specific action areas. Is it specifically for select board or municipal leaders or? <laughs> Yeah, for anyone who may be interested, and I'll note that um, uh, the um, the keynote speakers include not only Linda Dunlavey, who we just heard from, but also Joe Comerford and Representative Ayanna Presley from the Seventh Congressional District mm. in Massachusetts. Mm. Well, the Planning Board is doing a lot of work on affordable housing, so they might be interested too. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to them too. Any other announcements? Yeah, just to just to let people know that for four days in a row this past week, there was a bald eagle up flying, fishing up and down the South River wow. in the middle of town. Cool. Is there a um, nest? There is no nest. Um, the Fish and Wildlife did advise that February is the busiest uh, month of the year for bald eagle announcements, that there's all these strays from Canada coming down looking for moving water and they fly south till there's they can see moving water and, and that's Fish. that's what that's what it was but it was people that saw it said that it was a two-year-old male um the neat thing is uh, man Mandy and I saw it and went to the post office and said look it's right in the tree right across from here everybody look and everybody came out and they looked and of course the bald eagle had flown away by then so you know, somebody's like, you know, watch the hallucinations there. But then, but right on command, the bald eagle like flew um, the swoop down over everybody's head in the parking lot there. <laughs> and um, and it was just neat to see people's reaction. But we yeah. did have a bald eagle in Conway and people like Bob Baker said that they had never even heard of one in Conway their whole life. So I thought that was significant. Worth announcing. I had a friend in Plainfield who caught a freaking snowy owl in her uh, chicken coop and it was like this big. I mean, it was like, it was like, she's tiny. She's like four and a half feet tall. Like the owl was like literally almost bigger than she was. Wow. <laughs> so wildlife country living. Yeah. So there you go. That was it. My bald eagle announcement. <laughs> so our next meeting is next week, Monday, six o'clock. Great. Three hours is a legit meeting. This was a long meeting. I was afraid of this with all this these legit. discussions. Yeah. It's legit. Okay. Thank you very right. much, guys. Hang in there. Good night. Yep. Good night. Yeah. Thank you.